Hello everyone. Today we have a brand new what if. In this what if Naruto Namikaze has lived his whole life watching the tyrannical capital's oppression of District 12. He's been a victim of their cruelty himself in the past and it's led to him becoming the gruff, lonely, boy that he is. However while he seems cold to those around him, inside a raging fire of anger and indignation burns. They might just come to regret making him tribute. I hope everyone enjoys this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for brand new what ifs. Now on with the video. District 12 was always miserable at this time of year. Snow collected here and there, while most of the world seemed to have turned to a mix of icy mud. Everywhere one might look the aged buildings of the region seemed to sag in disrepair. All except one. The Justice Building with its cold gray stone walls and intimidating design loomed over the tired old town that made up the hub of the district. Naruto hated that building. More so, he hated the poles that rested opposite of it in the town square. They towered over him during the day, and mocked him in his dreams in the cold and listless nights. It was the destination for those who broke the laws of Painum, the unruly lawbreakers, who endangered the peace and stability of the district. Turning away, the blonde teen began making his way down the crowded and dingy roads, eventually leading him into the woods. He found the silence of the woods to be far better company than the citizens of District 12. The defeated and hopeless aura they all seemed to possess drove him mad and he couldn't bear to interact with them for too long before he needed to return to the serene forest to decompress. As he came closer to the barrier fence that trapped the residents of the district within, like prisoners, he glanced back and forth down the length of wire to ensure no one else was around before slipping through the same weak spot he'd been using for the last few weeks. The forest was as calm as it usually was. Birds chirping in the trees, a few mockingjays mimicking the tunes he and some other poachers had whistled to them. Unlike most who hid their gear inside the woods to hide them from the peacekeepers, Naruto had taken to hiding his knives on his person. It might have been more paranoia, but he dreaded being caught in a fight without them. District 12 was akin to a dog-eat-dog -dog world, and he intended to be the top dog should the situation ever arise. Soon coming by a trail he knew by heart more than anything, he plucked along, looking for the traps he had set out over the last few days. The game had grown scarce as it was during winters. Sometimes the best he could catch was a squirrel, but thanks to his traps, his haul was usually the best of those that hunted the woods past the wire. This allowed him to make a bit of extra money since he rarely needed all the prey he caught. Today seemed to be another slim picking. A single rabbit and three undersized squirrels. He hoped his traps in a nearby stream would have seen more success. Huffing at the poor hall so far, he made his way down the incline toward his spot where he stopped for a moment. He saw another figure nearby in a small clearing. Deciding to see who had joined him on this cold January morning, Naruto crept along through the brush before stopping and watched as a familiar girl seemed to have been practicing, at fighting the air. His lips quirked up slightly as he watched on. He recognized some of the movements she attempted. They were poor copies of something he had used to put a pair of bullies in their place a week before, at the school back in town. He hadn't taken kindly to someone trying to shake him down, especially by kids from the wealthier merchant section of the district. Stepping out, Naruto nearly laughed when Katniss was startled and nearly slipped when she spun around to see who it was. They were around the same age but Katniss came just under his nose in height. Align with that, their appearances couldn't contrast more. Naruto had once been among the merchant section himself and like the majority, he too has blonde hair and blue eyes. Though his shade of blonde was darker than most others, and his skin a bit more tan to the pale complexion of many from that part of the district. Katniss fit the appearance of most folks from the seam well. Dark hair with matching olive skin and gray eyes, the two looked different indeed but beyond their appearances, they had more in common than most would take the time to notice, including the two of them. What do you want, Naruto? Katniss asked once she regained herself. She clearly wasn't pleased with being seen doing what she had been. Especially by him, being as he was the one she had been copying. 
well, a guy has to eat. Naruto said bluntly, causing her to roll her eyes. Well then go off you go to your little traps, I haven't bothered them. The girl said as she pretended to look for something in her pack while hoping he would leave. If that's how you want it to be fine. Good luck on your, training. Naruto said with sarcasm. He yelped while lifting his arm to shield his face from the rocks hurled at him by the girl. It stung as his forearm took the blow, but it was better than getting hit in the head. Though the rocks wouldn't likely even leave a bruise. However, it was definitely a sign that Katniss' patience was reaching an end. Go on to your traps. Katniss said as she turned back, to go back to her practice. Naruto watched for a moment as she began doing the same as she had before, but this time ignoring his presence. Deciding to grant her wish, Naruto shrugged and turned to move away. You know if you really want to fight like that, try widening your feet, you need balance. Naruto said over his shoulder as he left. Katniss scoffed but once she was sure he was gone she did just as he had suggested and noticed the difference immediately. Continuing on to his fish traps, he thought back on Katniss a little. The girl was one of the few people he got along with. She was kind, and that was rare in District 12. Everyone minded their own business and would watch a man bleed to death rather than taking any action to help. He hated that. Hated how the whole district seemed to care only for themselves. He didn't fully blame them though. They hadn't put themselves into this poverty. No one wished to die of starvation. They were just all doing their best to survive. The fact that the Hall of Justice and the Peacekeepers' barracks were in such better shape than all the other buildings in the district, excluding only the Victor's Village, seemed to mock the residents of District 12. It didn't stop there, the residents of District 12, even those from the merchant section were never fat, at most they might have a strong and healthy appearance but most were small, hungry-looking mousy people. The peacekeepers casted a long shadow over them and some even sported a gut from overindulging. He couldn't despise them enough. It wasn't long after that that Naruto was on his way back into town. The old hub was effectively the black market for anything you might need or want in District 12. Old radios, coat buttons, jewelry, or just a bit more food than you could normally afford. Naruto ate more than his share normally, he took the time and effort to hunt after all. However most, even when he had slim selection like today, ended up sold here. The only issue was business in the hob rarely dealt using cash. Instead it was almost all bartering. So after bartering for a few things he needed, he set out to head to his final destination for the day. He bought a new whetstone for his knives, a new used pair of boots, and a set of needles and some thread and patches for his clothes. Mundane things they may be but they were still essential. Every year, the capital randomly selected one boy and one girl from each district to fight to the death in memory of a war the capital won against each of its twelve districts. On July 4th every year, the candidates, all boys and girls between ages 12 and 18, would be lined up on that same square he hated so much in front of the Hall of Justice and two would be randomly selected to participate in the game. It was a terrible thing. Some districts treated it more like an honor but 12 always handled the event with passing. Despite that, for the months prior to the reaping, as it was called, the candidates for tribute had to register their name at least once to be in the running. Since he was 14, Naruto had repeatedly placed his name the maximum number of times possible. The money wasn't a huge amount either way, but what did he have waiting for him here anyway? He was different from the rest of his district's candidates. If they added their names, they did so with a heavy heart and terror in their veins. Naruto had already committed himself to volunteer when he was 18 even if he hadn't been selected yet. While most of the district saw the games as nothing more than a death sentence, Naruto knew it was also the greatest stage in the country. Whoever was on it, could be heard in every corner of the nation. After registering, Something that was as simple as filling a small form out and having his blood taken, Naruto started making his way home. Trying to ignore the sight of hungry children and wilting houses. He instead focused on the dumb look the organizers had given him at the registry. 
a relatively new clerk had been a little worried seeing the number of times his name had been in the jar. It almost looked like she wanted to try and discourage him before glancing at the nearby peacekeepers and capital agents leading the registration. She clammed up after that and ushered him through the process without a second thought. Coming back to his house, Naruto found it really hard to not sigh at how the people of his home were focused on them and them alone. Stepping into the cold, empty building he went about his normal routine of preparing dinner. A watery thin soup much less than the stew he was aiming for. Bits of leftover squirrel from his meal the day before and some mushrooms and a wild carrot he'd been saving for a stew like this one. By the time he had finished eating it had grown dark. After cleaning up and changing into some warm sleeping clothes he climbed the creaking stairs to his bedroom. Before dropping into bed for the night he stopped by the pair of framed photos hanging in the hall. He whispered a quiet good night before slipping under his blankets to weather the cold January night. The last six months since registering for the reaping, Naruto had stretched his cash as far as he could. In the end even the amount he got from putting his name in for fifty chances to be drawn in the jar was not enough to carry him to the next reaping. That being said he had used the last of the money to pick up a worn leather jacket from the hob. It was light enough that it didn't smother him now that summer had come and still broke the chilly evening wind that swept through the mountains of District 12. It was perfect for Naruto lately. He had been staying up late for the last two weeks after noticing an interesting series of events. A specific man, one Naruto knew of very well, had started to stay later and later at the bar down the street from the Hall of Justice, before slowly stumbling his way back to the barracks to sleep. Evidently he had always been a bit of a heavy drinker but over the years he had grown worse and worse nowadays not even his fellow peacekeepers helped him home from his nightly visits to the bar. Naruto was happy to step in for the job tonight. As the off-duty peacekeeper sergeant with a growing beer gut bumped into his third wall, Naruto pushed off the building he'd been leaning against and cut across the road with his best, yet still lacking, fake smile plastered on his face. Just as the man pitched forward to fall, Naruto caught him around the shoulders and helped him back upright. Wahoo the hell are you? The man growled as he leaned heavily on Naruto. Naruto flinched at the smell of the alcohol wafting off the man's breath. With a struggle, he then readjusted their arms in order to support his footing. Don't worry about it, you need some help to walk the rest of the way. Naruto said through clenched teeth barely holding the false smile. The man hummed at that but didn't fight him as Naruto practically dragged him down the alley and straight toward the gap in the barrier fence. He was pleased that no one seemed to be out the night before the reaping. It wouldn't look good for him to be dragging a peacekeeper through the streets. Especially not this one. People knew this man. They knew the sergeant was heavy-handed and a drunkard. They also knew he had blood on his hands. Naruto's blood. They continued to walk, miraculously coming to the gap without others noticing them. The struggle of getting the man through the fence was annoying but manageable as the fool actually helped him hold the wire. Where the hell are you taking me by the way? The man slurred. More drunk than Naruto had ever seen a man still capable of some form of speech. Just a shortcut. Naruto replied. Shortcut my ass. Who did you say you were again? The sergeant said in confusion. Naruto's lack of answer as the two continued finally set the alarm bells off in the man's head. I said, I want to know your name damn it. The peacekeeper growled as he fumbled while shoving Naruto away. Naruto grappled with him briefly but the man managed to pull away fully and fell onto the muddy path. Grabbing at his baton to give himself an advantage he couldn't get a hand up to stop the boot smashing into him from his still standing, and sober, attacker. You little fuck. The sergeant cried out. You'll be dead tomorrow for this. I'll make sure of it. The man's words stopped as the bottom of Naruto's boot impacted his face, crushing his nose and pressing him into the dirt. Oh yeah? You don't even know who the fuck I am, their peacekeeper. Naruto mocked as he ground his foot down into the man's face. He had stopped trying to free his baton by this point and clawed at the foot pressing down on his face. 
Naruto lifted his foot off the man's face and yanked him off the ground by his collar. The pristine white of the sergeant's uniform was ruined and his face was a mess of mud and blood. You really don't know me, do you? Naruto hissed in anger at the man. The man didn't answer, his head still lolling to the side as his vision no doubt swam from a mix of alcohol and the beating he was receiving. You piece of shit. Naruto snapped while shaking the man roughly, you really don't remember? Four years ago? The foreman and his wife. Regaining a bit of himself the sergeant blinked away the tears in his eyes and got a good look at the person holding him up. Spitting up blood as he opened his mouth. He glared at Naruto as his eyes sharpened just slightly. Yeah I remember. Bastard who didn't know his place and his stupid bitch that got in the way. He sneered. Naruto trembled at that and his eyes darkened with rage. He would make this bastard pay. Pay for talking about them like that, and pay for what he had done to them. Before he could though the man slammed his face forward catching Naruto's cheek with the jagged edge of his nose. The teen stumbled backward while the peacekeeper broke free of his grip and tried to maintain his balance. From this point on things seemed to happen at a speed Naruto couldn't even register. He felt himself pull the knife from his belt and tackle the teetering man. They rolled for just a moment before Naruto had him pinned under his knees. Lashing out over and over as fast as he could, the boy drove his knife into the man's side. The peacekeeper cried out and grunted from the pain with each blow, as he tried to push Naruto off of him desperately. He was aging, drunk, and Naruto was filled with years of hatred for this man. For everything he had done, represented, stood for. He despised him with every bit of his being and that drove his knife harder and faster into the man's chest. Soon cries for help and grunts of pain became soft whimpers and throaty gurgling sound. His hands padded lightly at Naruto's sides before falling limp on the mud. Breathing heavily from the brief but violent struggle Naruto slid backwards off his victim and looked down at the man. He was dying quickly but Naruto could see his eyes locked onto his killer's face. Make sure you memorize me. I'm Naruto Namikaze and you killed my folks. You take that with you wherever you end up. Naruto said before awkwardly climbing to his feet and turning to leave. He stopped for a moment before turning back to the now dead man and spitting down on the corpse. Heading back the way he came he hoped to make a beeline for his home before thinking better of it and making for one of the larger streams he knew of. Once there he did his best to wash the blood off himself. He felt detached, as if watching his body on autopilot scrub at his own hands and wiping off the blood on his jacket. He was a bit surprised he wasn't crying or really upset at what happened. He thought he was supposed to feel like a terrible person, but all he felt was like a small weight had been lifted off his back. That and exhaustion. Deeming it enough to slip by anyone who might see him on his way home, Naruto headed back to his house. Like earlier he found no one on the roads and few lights switched on in the buildings he passed by. He idly wondered if stopping by the stream had been a waste of time before chalking it up to being better safe than sorry. Once at home, things seemed almost like any other night. He washed up, made some dinner, and set about getting ready for bed. He made especially sure he was clean of any blood and even tossed his shirt he had worn under his jacket into the wood stove used to heat his house rather than trying to scrub the red out of the white. Tonight as he passed the pair of photos he stopped like he usually did. A small smile slipped onto his face as he looked at them. His mother and father smiling back at him. He hadn't cried at all when he had killed the sergeant in the woods. Now though the tears slid down his face without resistance. Rest well, both of you. He said quietly before wiping his eyes and sliding into bed. Naruto woke early the next morning. It was going to be a busy day. He needed to head out to the woods and dispose of the peacekeeper's corpse before someone found him. He knew a few places no one would find the body but the trick was getting there before people went searching. Gathering up his usual hunting gear he bounded out of the house. Calling a goodbye out to the portraits on the wall as he went. He made quick time down the road to the fence. 
Already some folks were beginning to come out for the event of the day. The square was filled with crews putting the finishing touches on the reaping ceremony's preparations. He saw the tables for check-in, the large scaffolds for the camera and lighting crews, and the massive screen for the typical film sent by the Capitol to remind them all of what it claimed the games were about. Slipping out of town and past the fence Naruto was doubly sure no one was around today. Tracking down the muddy deer paths of the woods, he eventually found what he was searching for. The scene was far different than he recalled from last night. The expression on the dead man's face seemed bland and his skin had turned pale. The previously blood-stained ground had already dried and it looked like some beast had gouged his innards after Naruto had left. Naruto didn't look at the body for long before grabbing the man's wrists and dragging him through the brush toward a spot he knew to get rid of him. He hoped no one would come looking for the sergeant in this area. The trail showing where he dragged the corpse would be clear to anyone who frequented the woods and he didn't like the idea of what might happen to him should someone begin investigating the sergeant's disappearance in a place many of the district citizens knew he often hunted in. You fat bastard. Naruto grunted as he hoisted the body over the incline of rocks that blocked his path. It took a while but finally he hauled the body of the man up to the ledge of a ravine. The deepest in the area, and one filled more than halfway up with water in the driest part of the year. Pulling some loose large rocks over and the spare rope he kept with his hunter's kit, Naruto tied the body to the stones before giving it a good shove over the side, into the water below. He looked over to see nothing but the water returned to its placid state, hiding the secrets held under its depths. A smirk spread onto his face at the sight. Good riddance. He grumbled before turning and heading back. He didn't have a lot of time to check his traps before he would need to head back to town. He hoped to trade some at the hob before heading home to get ready for this year's reaping. He picked his way back through the woods before ducking into the brush at the sound of voices. He held his breath while thoughts of being found out ran through his mind. Imagining the punishments he might suffer. Death was the kindest of them. The one he feared most of all would be to be in a vox and living as a mute slave for the rest of his days. Thankfully, Naruto soon noticed the voices were a bit too young and familiar. Deciding to risk a glance he saw Katniss Everdeen and Gail Hawthorne. That was a relief. Both were here roughly as often as he was, and probably had been in the area of this clearing for a while, judging by how they were sitting and chatting about the day's coming event. He was about to slip away and avoid any sort of interaction with them when one of the peacekeeper hovercraft flew slowly over the treetops, headed toward town. Katniss and Gail bolted for the tree lean, nearly stumbling over Naruto who ignored their surprised looks at seeing him as he ran back on his own path into town. He had planned to check the rest of his traps and visit the hob but he'd rather play it safe for the moment. Bumping into his fellow hunters and the low-flying hovercraft had felt like two close calls. He'd rather not risk the third time being the charm for catching him. It didn't take long to get home, others were starting to fill the town, especially the peacekeepers, they seemed more on edge than usual and he had an idea why. Despite that, he did his best to act natural and head home to change into a nicer set of clothes, before throwing on his jacket and heading to the square with everyone else. By now the roads were filled with traffic. Dirt-covered miners heading to work. Mothers escorting frightened children to the center of town to likely watch their elder siblings and pray they were passed over, and those same elder children, slowly marching as if heading to a funeral. Naruto stood out among his peers. Being neither husky like most of the merchant kids, or thin like most of the kids from the seam, he stuck out even more with his black jacket and swollen cheek. Others gave him some space, more than they did the others and he didn't complain as he filed along with them to check in. All it took was a pin prick and a pressing on paper, and lo, he was standing among hundreds of other kids waiting for the usual fanfare from the capital to begin. Those around him seemed to shrink in on themselves while waiting for the reaping, several of the younger kids had tears in their eyes and everyone, like usual, were completely focused on themselves and what might happen to them. Unlike those around him, Naruto stood proud. 
a mark of black and blonde with cold blue eyes among a sea of drab grays and beiges. Naruto glared up at the podium as several politicians for the district took their seats on the stage behind the gleaming mic stand. Finally the event began. A thin woman that was obviously from the capital took the stage popping the microphone with her hand and grinning widely behind purple painted lips. She stood out terribly here in District 12 with her bright purple designer dress and expensive hairdo. The joyous look she held made it even worse. To her and no doubt her fellow capital citizens, today was a celebration. Welcome, welcome, happy Hunger Games and may the odds be ever in your favor. Her voice boomed over the mic while she looked out over the somber crowd. Now before we begin, we have a very special film to watch. One that was brought to you all the way from the capital. She continued before waving at the large screen to one side of the stage. As the film started, Naruto rolled his eyes in annoyance. He had seen and heard the thing plenty of times already. It would begin with images of the war between the capital and rebellious districts, then continue to talk about how they had nearly brought themselves to annihilation for daring to stand against the capital in open rebellion. It then spoke about the defeat of the traitors and that as a reminder to keep such terrible acts from occurring ever again, that it was decreed that each of the districts would surrender one male and one female as tributes every year to fight to death in the Hunger Games. It even said that the fighting was a pageant of honor, courage, and sacrifice and that the victor would be, bathed in riches and glory, for them to remember the capital's forgiveness and mercy. Naruto couldn't help but scoff. It was a load of bullshit, but he knew it was effective for what was intended. As with everything involving the capital, he felt the indignation and anger start circulating inside his chest but he clenched his jaw tight as the video finished up with its message and the woman on stage cheered along about how much she loved it. Now, her voice called out over the speakers again. The time has come for us to select one courageous young man and woman for the honor of representing District 12 in the 74th Annual Hunger Games. She paused momentarily to smile out over the two separated crowds of children. One set of boys and one set of girls. Now, as is proper, ladies first. With that she pulled off her expensive-looking gloves and stepped over to the larger clear glass bowl filled with tiny envelopes, each holding the name of one of the poor candidates for the games. Hanging her hand over the jar dramatically she slowly spun it around before snapping up a slip and making her way back to the microphone. Breaking the seal and unfolding the slip of paper she read it fully before looking out to the audience. Primrose Everdeen. She called out. Naruto joined the others in glancing over to the girls to see the unfortunate subject. He knew her from her name alone. The younger sister of his fellow hunter Katniss, not that you could tell by looking at her. Where Katniss had olive skin and dark hair and eyes, this kid was pale, blonde, and blue-eyed. The small girl found herself suddenly standing alone as the other former candidates backed away like she had a contagious disease. She looked terrified and baffled as if things hadn't registered for her. Naruto didn't outwardly change in appearance but he felt a small sliver of sympathy for the little girl making her way toward her peacekeeper escort. It seemed especially cruel for the raffle to pick someone on their first year in the drawing. He doubted she had multiple entries like some others either. As soon as she had reached the peacekeepers though, things became more interesting. A sharp cry for the girl's name had everyone one turning and Naruto caught sight of her elder sister Katniss surging forward toward the girl calling out to her. He remembered a similar event, but put the thought from his mind as he watched the events surrounding the two girls. The guards had stopped her from continuing up to her little sister causing her to cry out to her. No. No. Realizing quickly it changed nothing to simply say that she changed to something that surprised everyone present. I volunteer. I volunteer. I volunteer as tribute. Katniss said, with her voice becoming less frantic and more determined by the end. She shook free of the guards and raced to her younger sister before they started whispering between one another, too low for Naruto to hear them from where he was standing. He could hear the capital woman's voice spring back to life on the microphone however. I believe we have a volunteer, Mr. Mayor. 
the woman said with a surprised smile. Soon the sisters had stopped whispering as the younger girl cried and screamed no, before Gail swooped in and took her back to her mother. Meanwhile Katniss was led by the peacekeepers up to the stage. Her sure and resolute appearance had drained away and she suddenly looked pale as she approached the stairs. District 12's very first volunteer. Bring her up. The woman had moved to the stairs and was reaching out a hand for the new tribute while waving her fingers. Come on dear. She said before taking her by the shoulders and walking her over to the mic. When they made it to the mic, standing on either side they couldn't look more different. The smiling, cheery, brightly colored woman of the capital and the pale, sullen, frightened girl of District 12. What's your name? The woman asked. Katniss Everdeen. The girl croaked out with a dead voice. Well I bet my hat, that was your sister, wasn't it? She asked. A quiet yes was all that came in reply. Let's have a big hand for our first ever volunteer, Katniss Everdeen. The capital woman cheered, but instead of applause only silence met her. That is until soon several of the people began giving Katniss the three-fingered salute. First kissing their fingers and lifting their hands silently to show her their support. Naruto watched the first few commit to the sign of thanks and admiration used through the districts and he soon joined them. He smiled slightly at the shocked look of the girl on the stage. She really should expect something like this after the showing she had given. Tears that Katniss had fought to hold back finally broke and she silently cried while the woman continued the ceremony. And now for the boys. The hands lowered, and like before she made her way over to the respective jar of names and after swishing her hand around for a moment she withdrew a slip and stepped back to her mic, Naruto Namikaze. She called, causing the blonde to blink in surprise. The space around him grew wider as those around him turned to look at him, and like Prim earlier treated him almost as if he was suddenly tainted. Naruto was still surprised. Statistically he did have the highest chance of anyone to be drawn, but actually being picked seemed to flood anyone with shock. Still he managed to push himself forward steadily making his way up to the stage and standing beside her. Each of them contrasted heavily from the others. The crying girl, who was only there to save her sister, the smiling capital woman at no risk for her life in the near future, and the stoic boy, a bruised face and grim appearance glaring into the cameras. Here we are. Our tributes from District 12. She announced placing a hand on both of their shoulders before turning them slightly to face one another. Go on, shake hands. The two locked eyes for a moment before grasping each other's hands and shaking. Happy Hunger Games, and may the odds be ever in your favor. She then turned and started ushering the teens into the Hall of Justice. From there things were a bit of a rush. They were pushed along into a pair of rooms, Katniss to one side, Naruto to the other and told to wait. Naruto sat staring out the window quietly as he did. This was the part where family members would come to say goodbye. Naruto didn't really think having him wait here was necessary. Who would come to visit him? He had no one, the closest he could consider friends were the few traders at the hob that gave him a free meal when he hadn't caught anything. He didn't wait the fully allotted time before telling the guard he was done. The guard led him to meet up with the woman from before standing beside a car that he assumed would take them to the train to the capital. She looked like she might try and make conversation and not really looking forward to that, Naruto took a spot as far as he could from her and leaned against the wall of the Hall of Justice and kept his eyes off her. It did exactly as he hoped and discouraged any conversation from picking up. A little while later Katniss was led out, a little more like dragged out by peacekeepers, and they climbed into the car with their strange escort between them. Naruto fought back a sigh at that, he wished Katniss was in the middle separating him from the capital woman by as much space as the small vehicle would allow. Not that it would likely matter much as she continued to run off at the mouth and would have been just as annoying on the far side of the seats. You two are in for a treat, said the woman trying to make a conversation. All she got was a snort from Naruto and a look of mixed disbelief and hatred from Katniss. Something that nearly had him snorting again. Crystal chandeliers. 
platinum door knobs, and it flies. We'll be at the capital in less than two days. She continued ignoring the derisive snort and half-glare she had gotten. Naruto tuned her out. It was clear Katniss was doing the same and he doubted whatever she had to say hardly mattered in the end. Probably some nonsense about etiquette or something. He couldn't care less if he offended the delicate sensibilities of the people running the show. Well it was better to say he almost hoped to offend their delicate sensibilities. It sounded kind of fun, his life was probably going to be even shorter than it was intended to be so why not. Once they had finally come to a stop they led through the crowd at the station to a pristine silver train. The subjects of District 12 watched on in silence as they boarded and Naruto tried to ignore the terrified look of his fellow tribute. After climbing on the door slid open on its own and the most opulent room he had ever seen lay before him. Just as she had said everything seemed either made of crystal, platinum, silver, or gold. Half this room could feed a half dozen families in the seam for a year easily. That was just the trays of food and treats. The actual metal and other items could feed everyone in the seam for weeks, maybe more. Naruto scowled at the sight, no doubt he'd see even more extravagant waste on this trip. It might all be worth it though. He was about to stand on the largest stage Painham had, and he lacked any sort of filter. Sitting side by side the pair of tributes handled things slightly differently as they rode on to the capital. Katniss still seemed stunned silent by the entire ordeal, but Naruto could recognize similar emotions in her eyes to what he was feeling. He hated everything in this train car. Unlike the blank face of Katniss, he had settled on a menacing glare and clenched jaw as he listened to their escort prattle on about this and that. 200 miles per hour and you can barely feel a thing. Their escort, a woman they had learned was named Effie Trinket said with an odd bit of pride in her voice. I think it's one of the wonderful things about this opportunity. She continued. Even though you're here and even though it's just for a little while, you get to enjoy all of this. Katniss simply stared at the woman as if she was insane. Naruto for his part realized which item in the train that pissed him off the most. The dit seemed to finally realize the awkward air between them as Katniss continued to deadpan at her and Naruto's glare had moved from scanning the train car's luxuries to boring holes in her head. I'm going to find Haymitch, he's probably in the bar car. Effie said as she quickly stood and headed further back on the train. The two teens from District 12 sat in silence following that. Something Naruto normally would have preferred. At the moment though he felt the need to give Katniss a heads up. He won't be much help. Naruto said. What? Katniss asked, turning to look at him. He won't be much help. He's a drunk and he'll throw us to the wolves out of boredom. Rely on yourself. You already do, same for me. Naruto then turned to look away from her but he could feel Katniss staring at him. They both turned to look as the door at the head of the car opened and a disheveled man stumbled out. Naruto recognized him easily and didn't bother holding back the scoff at the sight of him. Stopping at the sound of the scoff the blond man heaved a heavy sigh and peered over the two teenagers in front of him through his messy bangs. Congratulations. He snarked while bobbing his head and giving a false smile. With that he continued past them picking up a glass and searching the room for booze. Stopping at the bottles under the window he browsed them for a time before casually picking one up and pouring himself a hefty amount. He moved easily enough while drunk, and handled the bottles while showing he had plenty of practice as an alcoholic. The two tributes could only sit and watch as he poured his glass and continued to rummage around opening up a container loudly and grumbling before looking around the room. Where's the ice? Haymitch asked the teens. They stared back at him. Naruto, clearly annoyed by the man and Katniss, somewhere between confused and stunned. Well? He asked again. The looks he got remained the same, though Naruto's glare hardened faintly. Heaving another sigh Haymitch slammed the lid for the ice bowl down hard enough to leave the bottles ringing against one another before grabbing the bottle he had used to keep for himself. He then stumbled over to the seat in front of Naruto and motioned toward it. May I, 
he didn't wait for an answer before plopping into the seat. The trio sat in silence, Katniss still continuing to stare at Haymitch while Naruto rolled his eyes and looked out a nearby window over the forest whizzing past the train. Huh, I expected you both to be more eager. Especially you little miss volunteer. Such a brave showing. Haymitch's voice was mocking with every word he spoke. Naruto could see a flicker of interest in his eyes as he looked Katniss over though. Like he was still assessing her for whether or not she would be worth his time. He hadn't even looked Naruto's way since sitting down and that caused his anger to spike. Listen, you have a plan or something? You are our mentor, remember? You're supposed to go dash, Naruto began growling out when Haymitch stuck a finger onto Naruto's lips and pushed him back slightly while sucking down the whole glass of liquor in his other hand. Mentor? He rasped as he cleared his throat from the alcohol he had just drank. Yeah, you alcoholic asshole, our mentor. The one we're supposed to learn how to get sponsors and shit from. Naruto barked. Hmm, I am. Oh well you seem to be on the ball. If you wanna tell me how to do this I guess you got it all handled right? The man said with a smile. Katniss was growing angry by this point as well. This was who they were supposed to rely on. This was the one they were supposed to getting advice and lessons from. The one that was supposed to be keeping them from death in the games. Not even a piece of advice? She hissed more in fear than outright anger. Oh, huh, some advice. Yeah how about you embrace the probability of your imminent death and know, in your heart, that there's nothing I can do to save you. The former victor said with his usual sardonic smile. Of course. Naruto snarled at the man's tone. Why are you even here then? Katniss shouted at him. The refreshments. He cooed. Worthless fucker. Naruto made to snatch away Haymitch's glass only for the man to slam his bare foot into Naruto's chest and press him into his seat. You made me spill my drink and these are brand new pants. Haymitch complained, shooting a glare Naruto's way. I'll spill more than that if you don't get your fucking foot off of me. The boy hissed, eyes narrowing dangerously. Katniss glanced between the two, a little worried. She didn't know Naruto well but he had a reputation for his hot-headedness. The last thing they needed was for Haymitch to be out of it for their whole preparation time. Naruto, relax, please. Turning his glare to Katniss, Naruto locked eyes on her and held it for a moment. In that brief second she saw something in his eyes that set him apart from her. It was frightening and few things truly terrified her the way his eyes did just then. Naruto softened his look after seeing the surprise in her eyes when he glared at her. Letting out a breath her bit back his building rage and settled with glaring at the man as he drug his foot off of his chest and slowly climbed to his feet. You know what, I think I'll go finish this in my room. He said as he stumbled away only to pause. He turned around and took a couple steps before stopping again, chuckling slightly and stumbling off toward his cabin on the train while grabbing a pastry on his way. I told you, useless. Naruto said as he stood up, where are you going? She asked him. I'm going to stuff myself on this crap and go to bed. There's nothing else to do until we get, there. Naruto said simply as he quickly loaded up a plate of treats and snatched a bottle of liquor of his own before disappearing down the hall toward his own cabin. Later Naruto sat staring up at the ceiling of his cabin as the television screen played the news. The news that of course was completely enthralled about the upcoming Hunger Games. The talking heads were the same as the last few years, Claudius Templesmith a popular newscaster, and Caesar Flickerman, arguably the most famous television host alive. We have two very fit 16-year-olds from this district. Templesmith said in joy. Of course, of course. They always provide pretty good opponents. Flickerman replied. Naruto turned his head to watch as the two men talked in front of a screen showing a previous year's games. Do you remember this year? Caesar asked. Oh of course. Claudius replied. One of my favorite years and one of my favorite arenas. 
Caesar continued. I mean the use of the rubble in the ruined city. Naruto glared at the talking hosts. His eyes darting past them to the screens showing the brutal murder of one teen by another with nothing more than a brick. And this moment here. This moment is a moment that you never forget, the moment when a tribute becomes a victor. Caesar said getting a furious nod and drawn out yes in agreement form his co-host. Naruto sat up and flung the remote at the screen causing it to simply bounce off and shut off for the night. He flopped backward onto his too soft bed and let out an explosive sigh. Thoughts of the man at the bottom of a ravine just outside District 12 filled his head. Memories of his mother and father laying on the pavement before the Hall of Justice overtook his mind and he soon found himself unable to sleep. He spent hours like that, staring at the ceiling of his room trying to rid himself of the memories of the dead he kept seeing. Eventually he decided enough was enough and got up to eat something. Making his way forward to the dining car Naruto realized that Effie had been right when she said they didn't feel a thing. It was like walking on even ground rather than riding in a vehicle. Still he disliked how unnecessarily opulent everything was. The gaudy fixtures of gold and silver at every turn and the simple existence of chandeliers on a train agitated him. His growing hunger wasn't helping and he needed some food to calm down. Walking into the dining car, Naruto froze briefly. He was a bit shocked he wasn't the only one here, being as it was the middle of the night. Instead Katniss was there, but instead of eating anything she stood a short ways away from the large table and looked to have wrapped herself tightly in her arms. Like she was trying to give herself a hug or ward off the cold. Next Naruto spotted the thin lines of tears from her eyes and he realized that Katniss had been silently sobbing to herself, clearing his throat slightly, to try and not be rude Katniss snapped to look up at him before her eyes widened and she spun around clearly wiping away the tears from her cheeks. When she turned back it was still clear what she had been doing, judging by the red swollen eyes she tried to conceal and the slight cracking of her voice. What are you doing here? She asked heatedly. Clearly embarrassed by having been seen in a moment of weakness. Weighing his options for response briefly Naruto chose a slightly friendlier tone of voice. Oh, you know, I thought about having some food, so I came to the food car. He idly waved toward the rows of plates and trays stacked with delicious looking treats. Katniss blushed warmly at that. He hummed slightly as she averted her eyes from him and after picking a piece of fruit he tossed it at the girl causing her eyes to flick back toward him and her hand to snap up and catch the projectile. You need to be eating every chance you get. The next few weeks are gonna be a nightmare and that's before we even get into the arena. That dog and pony show we see every year has got to be only a little part of the full thing and that alone makes me want to skip straight to being skewered by some district one prick with a sword. His grim humor caused her to roll her eyes, but as they rolled away from them Naruto could just barely catch the hint of amusement at his words. Sadly a frown slides back onto her face. We're going to be opponents too. I don't need your help. She all but whispered. A snort was her response. So? I know you don't but it's just some advice. Take it or don't, what do I care? Naruto casually loaded up his plate full of various items. You think some food and a few words will mean anything? She asked. Her eyes had gone back to the heated look she held earlier. Naruto seemed to pause a moment before shrugging, though his face seemed more sad and serious than before. Maybe? It meant enough in the past after all. He said simply before turning to leave. As he came to the door it fully slid open and he narrowly avoided colliding with Effie who stood directly in the doorway, having been obviously eavesdropping on their conversation. Annoyed by that little fact, and the fact that she of course was the escort sent by the capital at all Naruto glared her down causing her to bump into the wall behind her as she backed up. With a grunt he shoved his way past her and continued on, no doubt headed to his own cabin. Effie seemed to catch her breath for a moment after that ordeal before moving into the room with Katniss and giving her a small smile. It looks like someone isn't a morning person. She giggled before making her way over to pour some coffee. 
Katniss rolled her eyes at the woman before she too began to leave only to stop when she passed by the trays of food. Biting her lip for a moment in thought she soon began loading up a tray of her own filled with an assortment of different items. The thoughtful hum from beside her caused Katniss to turn her attention back on Effie and give her a questioning look. I'm surprised you're taking advice from a brute like Naruto. If anything I'd think he'd be listening to you. She said in a somewhat haughty tone after Katniss had stared for a moment. You don't know what you're talking about. Katniss said with a frown at her escort's words. What do you mean? Effie asked in surprise at the disagreement. She didn't think the two of them got along all that well. Both didn't seem hostile, but most definitely didn't strike her as friends. Not to mention Naruto was very aggressive from her experience. I mean he's rude and short-tempered, and he looks ready to fight anything and everything around him. She continued. That's because he's used to only having himself to rely on. Back home, I remember the only person to ever help him when he was starving was me. Then when I needed the same he was right there, never said a word, just saw my family was hungry like he had been and handed over some of his own food. He just hides his kind side under everything else to protect it better. Katniss lectured the woman. She may not be on spectacular terms with Naruto but they had more reasons to get along than to fight, she figured, and she hated the idea of someone from the capital talking down on her fellow tribute. Effie stared at Katniss for a moment before a blindingly bright smile spread across her face. She wasn't sure why but Katniss felt a sense of dread at the sight of it. She flinched slightly at the keening squeal sound that came out of the woman's mouth as well. Then the expression changed to the look of someone wanting to share a secret they planned to share enough times to not make it a secret anymore. You've seen it. His kind side, haven't you? Effie asked, knowing smirk still on her face. Katniss blushed brightly at that and caught off guard wasn't sure how to respond to such a thing. So rather than answer she turned and rushed from the room, even though she tried hard to look as though she wasn't rushing at all. Effie's amused look and giggles followed right after her. The next morning, Katniss was again making her way to the dining car for breakfast. She stopped when seeing the others gathered in the room already. Naruto was dressed already, but Haymitch, sitting across from him, was still wearing his sleepwear. Effie was busying herself with doing her makeup. Taking a moment to just watch them Katniss could tell Naruto had no respect for their mentor. That wasn't right actually. She had no respect for their mentor, Naruto seemed to have a deeper resentment for him but she wasn't sure what it was. At the moment the boy seemed intent on inhaling the eggs, bacon, and waffles on his plate while Haymitch mostly stared at his own plate. Having had enough of watching, Katniss stepped into the room. Catching the tail end of one of Naruto's complaints toward his mentor. You haven't even given us basic survival knowledge, like how to start a fire for warmth or to cook. Naruto growled as he cut at his waffle a little more viciously than was probably necessary. Ha! Huh. Now that's a good way to get killed. Haymitch snarked back before eating some of his own breakfast. A little lost, Katniss cleared her throat, catching the attention of the others. What's a good way to get killed? She asked, staring intently at Haymitch. Blinking a few times at her Haymitch turned back to his breakfast seemingly trying to ignore her. Oh joy, why don't you join us? He offered as he began filling a mug with coffee. I was just giving some life-saving advice. Like what? She asked as she took a seat. Naruto scoffed, shooting a glare at Haymitch. Deciding not to add in though he returned to his breakfast. Haymitch responded with an unamused look before looking over to Katniss. How about how to find shelter, it would be useful, if you were in fact still alive long enough to try and find shelter. Haymitch said with his usual mocking tone. Katniss only thought on the conversation for a moment before asking him how did they find shelter. Haymitch ignored her question with a sigh. Pass the jam. He pointed toward the bowl holding the jam with his knife. Katniss, more agitated, pressed harder. How do you find shelter? Give me a chance to wake up, sweetheart. 
he replied while pulling a flask out of his pajamas. This mentoring is very taxing stuff. Haymitch continued with a moan as he began pouring what looked like whiskey into his coffee. It might be if you fucking did any. Naruto said with a snarl as he glared at the man. Haymitch seemed a little surprised and looked to be assessing him with new light. Haymitch sighed again before reaching across the table asking if she could pass the marmalade only for Katniss to stab the table right beside his thumb causing Haymitch to give her the same look he had Naruto a moment before. That is mahogany. Effie cried in outrage. Look at you two, you just killed a place Matt, and you, you have the eyes of a killer don't you? Haymitch once more mocked them. Naruto however had to fight back the flinch he felt coming on from the man's words. Haymitch reached out and plucked the knife out of the table. He then leaned forward to glare back at both of the kids. You really want to know how to stay alive? You get people to like you. The confused looks from the two of them caused him to chuckle. Oh, not what you were expecting? He asked while he started spreading jam onto a piece of toast. Well when you're in the middle of the games, and you're starving, or freezing some water, or a knife, or even some matches can mean the difference between life and death. And those things only come from sponsors. By now he had set all his silverware and food to the side and was looking between the two teenagers to better emphasize his points. The only way to get sponsors is to make people like you. Neither of you are off to a very good start, I mean I doubt you really even know how to act anyway but, well, like yourselves. The group returned to eating for a bit. Naruto quickly polished off most of his plate while Katniss stared at Haymitch for a moment before the blonde boy nudged her slightly. Flicking a glance toward him and seeing his motion toward the food she started filling her own plate, remembering his words from the night before. Soon after however Naruto froze and seemed to stare out the window catching the attention of the others. They turned to see what he was looking at and saw their first glances of the capital through the trees. So there it is. Naruto said quietly. He stared at the city in contempt. It's just like the train of course. The view of the city disappeared as they passed into a tunnel and Naruto and Katniss exchanged looks as they felt the train begin to slow. As they neared a full stop they heard the roar of the crowd before they could see it. Naruto stood and stared out the window as they finally stopped fully. His lips pulled back and the most vicious glare Katniss had seen on his face appeared. He looked as if he was imagining the deaths of each and every one of the people outside the train before he huffed out a loud breath and turned away heading back to his room. Haymitch had also been watching him. Analyzing eyes taking in everything they saw behind a drunken mask. Flicking his attention to Katniss as she watched Naruto too, he picked up the knife she had stabbed into the table and offered it to her. You better keep this knife. He's got those eyes again. Haymitch said. Katniss wasn't sure if he was joking or not. Caesar Flickerman and Seneca Crane were both on television, a recurring thing for Caesar. The interviews and talk shows that built up to the games were a near continuous program. Every host and talking head weighed in on the event but the one everyone wanted to really see was Caesar Flickerman. Tonight he was interviewing the one and only Seneca Crane, Game Master of the Hunger Games. The man who managed and orchestrated everything surrounding the games under the watchful eyes of Paynham's president. From the arena to the training and on to even the items available to the tributes he had to sign off on it. So now that you've seen them, what do you think about this year's crop of tributes? Are there any surprises that we can expect this year? Caesar asked. Seneca gained a thoughtful expression. It's really hard to tell just from a reaping, but I think this is a very interesting mix. Yes. And whenever you have a volunteer from an outlying district that's something you can't ignore. Seneca replied. True, word says many find the tributes from District 12 to be far more fearsome than in recent years. Caesar said. Most definitely, you can expect great things from both I think, but we'll know more with the escort interviews. I look forward to seeing you talk with them all. Seneca replied. Naruto lay on a metal table as the various assistants stirred around him. The whole process was demeaning and annoying. 
they poked and prodded at him. Plucked at his eyebrows, trimmed his hair, scrubbed his body, and altogether invaded every inch of privacy he would have liked to keep to himself. He heard Katniss a few spaces over trying to ask their stylists a question. He couldn't make out the response but whatever it was he doubted the girl liked to hear it. She was nearly as opposed to close contact with others as he was. After a while they wheeled the tables. Each tribute was laid onto into a small room before leaving them alone. After a time the door opened again and a woman entered. She was attractive, or at least Naruto figured she would have been if it wasn't for all the outlandish capital styles she wore with her hair and makeup. Despite that, she struck him as more genuine than most of the strange and horrendously dressed capital dwellers that he interacted with. Well, aren't you a grim one? Always frowning and glaring at everything within range of your pretty little eyes. She said with a smile, one that had an odd calming effect on his frayed nerves. Then again I suppose you don't have much to smile about right now do you darling? So there are some among you that understand a bit. That's a surprise. You all usually look ecstatic to see kids ripping each other's throats out. Naruto replied sitting up. Hmm, a rude one too. No, not all of us are like that. There are plenty who see what these games really are. Not that it matters much, what is a silent shake of the head amidst a roaring crowd? She responded curtly taking as eat on the chair beside him. That's fair, I guess. Naruto replied, looking down for a moment. Well, let's move on since you clearly aren't about to apologize. She chided lightly. My name is Portia, and I'm here to make you look good and do my best to help your image and get you sponsors. As impossible as it might be. How exactly could you give me help with that? Dress me up as a coal miner and paint black spots on my face? I'll look like every other poor bastard to ride those chariots out for the last seventy-three years. Naruto heaved out a sigh. He didn't see how dressing up in a costume was going to help him get sponsors and support for the games. He wasn't sure how much he was prepared to rely on it anyway. He wasn't willing to pass up his chance on the stage just to better his chances in the games. He would be heard. Sina and I had a different idea for that actually. Do you want to hear it or keep your pity party going? I'm a bit thirsty and can come back when you're done. Portia gave him a raised brow waiting for his answer. Pity party? I dash, Naruto began growing angry at this woman's words. You are a tribute and there is nothing you or I could do to change that. Except maybe poke a hole in your neck with those scissors over there. So unless that's the help you want, let me do the only thing I can for you. Trust me, it will do more than you think. She said as she stood and stepped over to the closet and began pulling out clothes. I still don't understand how dressing up is supposed to get me sponsors. Naruto groused. Of course you don't. All the sponsors are from the capital and you most definitely aren't. Here everything is about image. I've heard stories of families preferring to starve and keep buying high-end clothes than eat and dress casually. You have to make a splash, or rather a spark and get everyone's eyes on you. She explained. Naruto was quiet as his stylist went about her work. This might actually help him more than he thought possible. If Portia was right and he truly got all the capital's attention it was all for the better. A short while later Naruto and Katniss were reunited as Sina. Katniss stylist explained how their outfits were going to work while Portia hovered around them with finishing touches on both of them. Okay, this is safe, I promise. It's not real fire and the suits are built so you won't feel a thing. It looks real enough, but I guess that's the point. Naruto commented. You ready? Sina asked more to Katniss than to Naruto. Don't be afraid. He continued as he approached with the little torch that activated the suits. I'm not afraid. Katniss said resolutely and Naruto smiled slightly at that. The audience sitting on either side of the tribute's parade path was giddy with excitement. The booths holding the sponsors and other wealthier viewers buzzed with activity as they chatted over expensive wines and foods. 
At the far end of the road the tributes would take rested an especially imposing building with a large balcony facing the promenade. Here the most important of Paynim's leaders sat. They flanked the seat of the ruler of the nation himself, Coriolanus Snow. The aging man, one of the few old enough to recall not only the first Hunger Games but also the war that preceded it. Beyond even that, his father, a general for the capital during the rebellion, was one of the masterminds behind the Hunger Games. Overlooking the stands and parade route for the tributes a press box had a good sight of the entire event. Caesar Flickerman, once more on screen, alongside Claudius Templesmith were hosting the event. Caesar started the show by addressing his audience with an explanation of the night, not that anyone needed it. The Hunger Games were as much a part of Paynham by this point as the people themselves. Over 100,000 people, craning to get a glimpse of this year's tributes. It's also worth noting that this is the first moment that sponsors will be catching a good look of the tributes. The importance of this moment cannot be overstated. Caesar commented while tapping the desk in front of him to make a statement. While Caesar and Claudius had the public eye, hidden away from the view of the people of Paynham was Game Master and his dozens of technicians orchestrating the whole of the event down to the tiniest of details. Very nice. First chariot on my mark in 1514. Seneca Crane ordered. Back with the two talk show hosts they smiled brightly and motioned toward the screen behind them as horns announced the first of the chariots coming out. There they are. There they are. This year's tributes. Claudius cheered. In the stands the people stood up applauding the line of ornate horse-drawn chariots as they made their way down the parade route. Yes, it's the most exciting part. Here we have the first two from District 1 of course. Marvel and Glimmer are both resplendent in pink and silver. Caesar pointed out. You can just see the inspiration of a peacock I think. Claudius commented. Of course, luxurious as their district after all. Caesar laughed. Oh, and their district too's Cato and Clove. Look at those outfits, like a couple of powerful golden demigods. Strong as the stone their district is known for no doubt. Caesar said as he patted the wall beside him for emphasis. The pair continued on about the tributes, naming each one and calling out about what they found most intriguing about their outfits. This all really gives you goosebumps doesn't it? Claudius asked in excitement. And don't you love how the stylists, they so clearly, are able to reflect the character of the district they represent? Caesar commented. Right, right, there's District 4. Claudius said before both chuckled at the colorful outfits they wore. Fishing. Caesar laughed out. I like it. Claudius agreed with a laugh. That's very good. Oh, and behind them we have two power plant workers. Right? Caesar said with a smile. And then, what is that in the background? Both men leaned forward to try and get a better angle on the distant chariot. The most distant one. The audience lost its senses at the sight of District 12's tributes. They roared and screamed their adoration for the pair of teens as their chariot brought up the rear. Both of them appeared to be literally burning as if on fire. Flames waving off behind them like a pair of capes. Besides the flame they wore glossy black skin-tight outfits. Before them District 2 now looked like a poor attempt at costuming while they looked almost inhuman, burning before the eyes of thousands in person and millions across the country. Katniss looked out to the crowd and couldn't fight the look of confusion on her face. She couldn't understand the joy and excitement she saw from them as she and Naruto rode past. However they loved them. Both of them, for just wearing interesting clothes. She caught sight of herself in the screens above the crowd and almost didn't recognize herself. It was completely surreal. Naruto conversely was disgusted. He scanned the faces and saw not one among the thousands he felt he could consider normal, or even human. Just the freaks of the capital. Now see that. I love that, two young people stoic and strong, making an impression. Like they're saying, I'm proud I come from District 12, we will not be overlooked. 
I love that. Caesar cheered. People sure are going to be paying attention to them right now. Claudius added. No doubt about it. Caesar said as both men laughed. Once more out of sight of the audiences, Game Master Seneca pulled at the strings controlling the entire show. And, we're ready. President Snow, we're live. Cameras cut to show the ruler of Paynham steadily make his way to his feet before approaching his podium and smiling down at the chariots and roaring crowds below. To many he appeared a kind, grandfatherly figure. A snowy white mane of hair and an equally white beard framed his face and he looked almost like Santa Claus should the Christmas gift-giver have shaved a few pounds. He waved to the crowds and slowly, but surely they quieted down. He took a moment to simply smile out at them, appearing as though he was finding his words though they had been carefully selected by him hours beforehand for this moment. Welcome. He began as the last of the cheers died away. Welcome. Tributes. We welcome you. The audience roared their approval as if to add their own welcome with the presidents. We salute your courage and your sacrifice. Below him Naruto and Katniss both glared up at the man who had a hand in at least sixty of the seventy-four Hungry Games. And we wish you, happy Hunger Games. And may the odds be ever in your favor. Another loud crescendo in applause from the audience roared out. With that the event ended and the twelve chariots continued onward underneath the building. There the various tributes dismounted and were met with their stylists. That was amazing. Sinna called out as he and Portia approached. We are all anybody is going to be talking about. Effie declared as she raced to join the group. So brave. Haymitch added, once again mocking them. Are you sure you should be near an open flame? Katniss asked, throwing his attitude right back at him. Fake flame. Haymitch said, rolling his eyes. Yeah, but we can dream. Naruto added in. You know, I'm starting to think you two don't like me or something. Are you sure you? He stopped as he noticed the tributes from District 2 glaring at them, the male Kato even twitching slightly. Let's uh, let's go upstairs. Hey Mitch said as he and Effie began leading the pair to the elevator up to their rooms. So each of the districts have their own floors, and because you're from 12 you get the penthouse. Isn't it marvelous? Once they arrived at the top floor Effie quickly took the lead waving them after her with Naruto and Katniss slowly following behind and Hamich bringing up the rear. Come on. She said trying to usher the teens forward. Both didn't change their pace though, instead taking in the massive luxurious apartment they would be staying in for their brief time in the capital. It was massive. More like a cavern than a room. There were even indoor rock gardens, massive art fixtures, and the furniture itself looked more expensive than Naruto's and Katniss houses back in twelve combined. So this is the living room. I know, I know. Now your rooms are right over here. Why don't you clean yourselves up a little bit before dinner? Effie offered. The group separated. Naruto kept his distance from the various avoxes in the room. His worst fears were to end up like them. Eventually he found his room and enjoyed cleaning himself up before dressing in some of the clothes set aside for him. Stepping into his bedroom he noticed that just like the rest of the apartment everything here put all he had ever owned to shame. Sighing he sat on his bed and looked out over the city through his window. His eyes grew colder and he laid facing away from the sight. Tomorrow he would begin the brief training before the actual games. He might need all the rest he could get. The first morning that Naruto and Katniss would join the other tributes in training for the coming arena combat seemed to drag on for Naruto, though the opposite was true for his fellow tribute from District 12. For Katniss it felt like she had blinked and they were in the training rooms already. Naruto's experience had been with a start of lying still as he stared up at the ceiling of his room. He'd hoped to get plenty of sleep in preparation for the training and evaluations, sadly he had been too restless to get more than a couple hours here and there. Still when morning came he hadn't felt all that tired. 
That is until he was subjected to the usual experience of Effie Trinket and Hamish Abernathy. Both diminished his patience in a variety of ways. Perhaps it was the lack of sleep, or the capital itself but he felt his patience burning to shorter and shorter fuses as the morning wore on. Maybe it was the sight of the Avox reminding him of a woman from District 12 who had been sentenced to the same punishment a couple years prior. Whatever the cause he figured his growing agitation was clear enough to see, though no one changed the way they acted around him so perhaps he was better at controlling his emotions than he had thought. The truth of course was that like himself and Katniss, everyone was far too caught up in their own thoughts to really pay that much attention to the actions and body language of each other that morning. When they finally dressed in the snug uniforms and made their way to the training room, Naruto made sure to try his best to take in the capital around him, no matter how much he despised it. The city was a sort of mix of a brutal and elegant style he decided. There were some buildings that reminded him of the Hall of Justice back in District 12, simply more ornate, but most looked like something from a storybook his parents read to him as a kid. He figured that that might have actually been the inspiration. One thing that he could have done without was the enamored-looking crowds that gathered to gawk and cheer at them as they traveled. The happiness and actual friendly looks they sent himself and Katniss just proved the thoughts Naruto had on how detached all of these fools really were with what was happening here. Cries about loving them, or they believed in them struck him the strangest. Not only did these people sound stupid, not knowing the first thing about Naruto and Katniss they were actively part of the program that would kill at least one of them as well as twenty-two others who were similarly going to be going through the same death match in a few days. The hypocrisy of them loving him and them wanting to see him dead was aggravating and he honestly couldn't understand it. His only choice as he felt his temper rising was to focus on something else. Sadly for her, Katniss ended up being that something else. She looked plenty uncomfortable, except where Naruto's reaction was to bleed into anger and rising rage hers was more like complete confusion at the actions of these freakish-looking people. Still Naruto could see the hiding resentment she held for them behind her eyes and it resonated with him. So without a word he simply placed a hand on her shoulder and shared a look with her. No words or even smiles were exchanged between the pair of tributes but still they seemed to understand one another and like a switch was flipped both took on a flat expression and continued on to the training center. Once finally making it there they then had to wait for the rest of the contenders to arrive. Naruto used what time they had as the first arrivals to try and scope out the room and see what they would be dealing with. There seemed to be a station for nearly everything they might contend with in the arena. He could see a few areas that he planned to avoid till evaluation time though. The accuracy range with knives as well as the hand-to-hand -hand abilities were not something he wished to show off, at least with other tributes out and about. There were plenty of non-combat sections as well, a trap area, one to teach them how to clean and prepare food they had caught, another to show them what was poisonous and what wasn't. It was honestly a little overwhelming and he doubted even with the nearly two weeks they would have here that he could really use all the different stations fully, which meant he and Katniss would need to pick and choose. He'd have to talk with her about what would be the best to try and increase their chances of survival. When the other tributes began to enter he started to try and get a read on them as well. He wasn't surprised that the careers were all strong-looking. Especially those from District 2. The male tribute from there seemed to look at the rest of the line of tributes like food and Naruto could tell just by looking at him that he would be among the most dangerous, if not the most dangerous opponent in the entirety of the games. The careers weren't the only dangerous competition of course. Most of the middling tributes could be threats, though they didn't strike Naruto as particularly special. He hoped to get a better read on them as they trained though. Saldi most probably had the same idea that he would employ, hiding his best skills for the evaluation. When he got to the lower districts though he realized that there were definite threats among them. The male tribute of District 11 was built like a truck. He had the look of someone more than capable of surviving in harsh territory as well. Beyond that though Naruto had to recognize, one of his greatest opponents would likely be his fellow tribute from District 12. He knew she could use a bow, better than anyone he knew honestly. She also was tough as hell, 
but then again you had to be to like like she had in the scene back home. Finally as the tributes were all assembled a woman, he had heard named Atala, came forward to explain to them how the next couple of weeks would work. She seemed the no-nonsense type and Naruto was happy she was the one seemingly in charge here as he had enough of the usual flighty capital types to last a lifetime already. In two weeks, twenty-three of you will be dead. One of you will be alive. She began, Naruto watched as Katniss and Kato seemed to stare one another down briefly. He did his best to ignore it, Katniss might be his fellow District 12 tribute, but in the coming weeks she could end up benign his opponent just like anyone else here, no matter how much the thought of that might bother him. Who that is depends on how well you pay attention over the next few days, particularly to what I'm about to say. Atala continued. Naruto had taken to scanning his fellow tributes once more, he felt a bit of pity for the female tribute from Eleven, she was the possibly youngest present and looked like she had been chosen on her first reaping. The only other one her age was a boy from District 4. Both seemed unlikely to go very far at first glance. First, no fighting with the other tributes. You'll have plenty of time for that in the arena. There are four compulsory exercises. The rest will be individual training. My advice is don't ignore the survival skills. Everybody wants to grab a sword but most of you will die from natural causes. Naruto glanced behind the instructor and analyzed the collection of wealthy-looking men and women who sat on a raised platform watching them. Among them was the game master Seneca Crane as well as many of the sponsors. Naruto knew they were already being raided. It was an oddly dehumanizing feeling, but then again the entirety of the games had the same sort of sense surrounding it. 10% from infection, 20% from dehydration. Exposure can kill as easily as a knife. With that she nodded her head and the other instructors began leading the tributes through a handful of drills and showing them around the different sections of the training room. Naruto gravitated toward the survival skills like Atala had suggested. He focused on basic things like finding and building shelter as well as some of the exercises intended to help memorize edible and poisonous plants. Nearby Katniss seemed to focus on a few similar stations, like treating a wound or purifying water. The majority of the careers seemed to have the opposite intention of himself and Katniss though. They went straight to the combat-oriented stations. It became very clear, very quickly, just how skilled they were in combat as well. One was showing up an instructor with a set of bar clubs to simulate swords. Another was showing his skill with a spear, the District 2 tribute that had seemed so interested in their district was practicing with an imaginary opponent with his sword. Not all of the tributes were doing so well in training however. The District 7 tribute had garnered some dangerous attention from the career pack already after failing to cross on the monkey bar's obstacle and injuring his leg. The poor boy had already been slated among the weakest and Naruto knew he wouldn't last long, should he even pass the first day. A few others had slowly started moving into the combat stations like the careers. The District 10 male looked to be liking the sword, but whereas the District 2 tribute moved with skill and practice grave with the blade Naruto saw this bow was all brute force with hacking and slashing motions. Still he was skilled and athletic enough he might prove a threat in the arena. Naruto's attention, as well as most others had been pulled to a fight between the District 2 tribute, Kato and the District 6 tribute Jason. Kato repeatedly demanding for Jason to return a supposedly stolen knife while Jason simply said he didn't have it. The instructors and peacekeepers had to get involved to break them up before it got out of hand. However while most eyes had remained on the pair of tributes shouting at one another, especially on Kato as he threatened to hunt Jason down first and foremost in the games, a handful of others managed to glance up and catch the true instigator of the entire thing. Ru, Naruto recalled was her name, the small girl from Eleven that he had all but written off earlier, hung from the ceiling as if it was the most natural thing in the world while toying with Kato's precious knife. He needed to re-evaluate his opinion of her clearly. Despite not only himself but her fellow District Eleven tribute and his own comrade from Twelve, not even the sponsors seemed to notice Ru hidden among rafters. So when Naruto later saw the starting odds for each of them, Ru remained very much at the bottom. 
Eventually Te Day was through and they returned to their apartment for food and rest. Effie and Hamich joined them at the table, once again set with a lavish meal. They didn't waste much time and launched into talking shop with their mentor about what course of action to take. Their first item of business was Hamich reminding them to keep their best skills, whatever they were hidden. This steadily moved on to discussion of the careers after Katniss had mentioned how they were immediately going on to what they seemed best at. Careers are always volunteers from District 1 and 2, they train in an academy until they're 18 and volunteer. By that point they are pretty lethal. He explained. That doesn't mean they get any special treatment though. In fact they stay in almost the exact same apartment you do and I don't think they let them have any dessert but you can have all you want. Effie tried to change subjects. Naruto scoffed at the capital woman's words before turning back to Hamich. How did you beat your careers? He was caught a bit off guard when Hamich laughed loudly, and bitterly at his question. The laugh made the hair on the back of his neck stand on end. Katniss and Effie both looked uncomfortable by the man's outburst of laughter as well. Steadily he stopped though and took a long drink from his glass of wine before smacking his lips and looking directly to Naruto's eyes. It doesn't matter how I beat them. Every tribute fights differently. You need to learn to beat the ones you're facing not the ones that are already dead. Hey Mitch said before looking back to his meal. Naruto fumed for a moment silently, eyes boring into Hey Mitch for the useless answer before turning back to his own meal. After some time eating in silence the mentor did look up again to speak. This time focused on Katniss rather than Naruto. I heard you can shoot. He said while picking at his food. I'm alright. She answered simply. Naruto on the other hand snorted, drawing the rest of the table's attention. If you consider supplying half the game available at the hob alright then sure you're just alright. He said with a small laugh as he continued eating. Katniss turned to glare at him for outing her abilities though. Well you brought in more than me. Yeah, with traps. Katniss can hit a squirrel dead on in the eye with no problem. He replied looking up to Hamich. Naruto is good with knives, as good at throwing them as he is fighting with them and he's nearly as accurate as I am with a bow. Katniss said, turning back to her food. Naruto blinked confused for a moment at the strange conversation they had just had. It felt like an argument but he wasn't sure what they were arguing over or why. He was also a bit surprised that Katniss was as knowledgeable as she was on his abilities. The group had fallen to silence as they returned to eating. That only ended as Effie vaulted suddenly to her feet. It's on, it's on. She cheered causing the others to stare at her as she turned on the main screen near them. As the television flickered to life they watched as the Hunger Games host Caesar Flickerman appeared in a reclined seat, comfortable as could be on screen. Beside him Effie, dressed in her usual outlandish fashion that was popular here in the capital smiled broadly. Below them the words tribute escort interviews ran across the screen. So, Effie, what can you tell me about your two tributes? Naruto Namikaze and Katniss Everdeen. What are they really like? Caesar asked, leaning forward in interest. Oh, well I suppose I'll start with Katniss. She's very serious and quiet for a girl her age you know, but under that she's a sweet thing really. She strikes me as very brave and loyal as well. Everyone saw how she volunteered for her little sister of course. I mean it doesn't get very much sweeter than that. Effie said all smiles. She certainly sounds charming. Caesar offered and Effie simply nodded in reply. Katniss appears to me like a very strong and capable young lady. Very independent I think. Well District 12 sounds like they might have a very promising prospect with her. The host said. Most definitely. Now Naruto on the other hand. Effie paused as she seemed to be thinking on her words, However by now Naruto and Katniss had learned she typically did that to add a dramatic moment to whatever she felt like saying rather than actually simply speaking her mind. Naruto is difficult? Caesar asked her, 
glancing at the camera at the possible drama unveiling itself. Effie seemed to finally decide on her words then. When he first came onto the train back in District 12 I will admit I didn't get a very good first impression of him. For such a handsome young man he seemed so cold, angry, and irritable. He did appear very strong and a natural-born warrior if I were to be so bold. She explained. Images of Naruto trudging his way up to the stage for his reaping appeared behind them causing both to glance back at the videos briefly. For the first time Naruto actually noticed how angry he appeared from the outside. If that was your first impression, what changed? Caesar asked. Well, that night on the train ride to the capital I had grown a bit peckish and decided a midnight snack would be nice. I got out of bed and made my way to the dining car and just happened to notice both Naruto and Katniss inside talking. Well, I already had the impression he was some sort of brute of course so I couldn't help myself. I had to listen in. I thought maybe he might be threatening the poor girl or something. Effie answered dramatically. Naruto turned to glare at the Effie that was present in the room with him causing her to lean away from him but keep her attention on the screen. She didn't want to miss a bit of her performance. Other than leaning slightly away from him though she ignored him entirely. So then what happened? Caesar asked, growing more intrigued by the story of the tributes of District 12 now. As it turns out, Caesar, I couldn't have been more wrong. Here I was listening for him making promises to take her out early in the games but instead he was encouraging her. She said with her broad smile back on her powdered and painted face. Really? Caesar asked in surprise, playing his part as host well. Yes. He was telling her to be strong, and reminding her to eat to keep her strength up and to stay focused on the games and surviving. When he left he nearly ran into me. Effie giggled out at the end causing a small laugh from the man on screen with her. Anyway, I don't think the boy likes strangers very much. He seemed very prickly around both me and Hamish, and the glare he gave me when he found me listening in to him talking with Katniss was as cold as ice. That all being said, he did seem much calmer around Katniss. She continued. Oh my, that seems like the kind of boy many of our viewers could get behind. Caesar said as he again looked toward the camera and the audience behind the camera shouted their agreement. Oh, that's not even all to this story Caesar. Effie called out regaining the audience and host's attention. After Naruto left, more like stalked back to his room with some food of his own, I was left alone with Katniss in the dining car. Of course I decided to strike up a conversation, what escort doesn't want to learn all they can about their tributes? As I was saying though I spoke with Katniss and she told me something that really caught my attention. Effie angled her head like she was being tempted with a dirty secret. Well don't keep us in suspense Effie. We all want to know what she said, right? Caesar asked the audience, getting shouts of agreement once more. Well, I believe her exact words were that, he has a kinder side, and that only she has seen it. Evidently both tributes from District 12 this year have struggled with poverty in the past and even battled with starvation before. From what I learned Katniss once shared a bit of food with Naruto when he was on the verge of death and in return he has shared his own food with Katniss and her family ever since whenever they were needy. Effie said. The crowd let out a collective sound of awe at the thought. Naruto on the other hand intensified his glare on the colorful woman sitting near to him. Oh. I'm still not even done. Katniss told me he puts on a gruff facade to protect his kind heart hidden beneath. Effie looked to be swooning at the words. Caesar was now letting out, us at the sweet thought himself. Back in the room though Naruto's attention had switched form Effie to Katniss, though instead of glaring his eyes had widened into dinner plates at her supposed words. Katniss for her part was blushing up a storm and Hamich. Well Hamich looked to be enjoying every moment of what was happening. Tell me, do you think we might have a budding romance between competitors? Caesar asked with a grin. Both Naruto and Katniss, who had been staring at her plate by this point, snapped their attention to the screen with those words. I think we just might. Effie responded boldly with a smile. 
Naruto and Katniss shot a look at one another briefly before both blushed lightly. A moment later however and both were glaring daggers at Effie who was doing her very best to ignore the both of them and keep her own eyes on the screen. I saw the brightest blush on the girl's cheeks when I teased her. I probably shouldn't have but I couldn't resist. Effie said conspiratorially. I don't blame you a bit. Caesar barked out with his laughter. As the screen flicked off Effie turned back to the others. Naruto was still glaring at her. Though with the mention of Katniss blush on the train the girl had taken interest in her plate once again to avoid any kind of eye contact with the others in the room. What the hell were the rocks you call a brain trying to do with that? What made you think this was a good idea to humiliate us like that? Naruto demanded from the woman. That's enough of that. Heimich shouted startling the others and causing them to jolt slightly in their seats. He had even cowed Naruto momentarily as he hadn't expected such an angry tone from his mentor. You should be thanking her honestly. She did you both a big damn favor, especially you idiot so appreciate it. Heimich continued on once he had everyone's attention. Naruto's briefly surprised look shifted to complete confusion as he stared at the man. Katniss had also turned to look at him like he was insane. What do you mean? How is saying all that crap helpful at all, it just makes us look like we aren't focused on the games and are a couple of lovey-dovey morons or something. Naruto argued. I already told you too that you both need sponsors. The only way to get sponsors is to get people to like you. Heimich drawled like he was talking to a toddler causing Naruto's temper to spike. I ask again, how the hell is that supposed to get people to like us? Naruto questioned through gritted teeth fighting to control his anger at being spoken to in such a condescending way. Heimich rolled his eyes and finished his glass of wine off before focusing back on the boy with an annoyed sigh. Let me spell it out for you. Earlier, they thought you were a wild asshole who enjoyed the tantalizing thought of everyone in the capital dead. Now, they think you are a poor tortured soul that just needs the right tender caring touch to heal and show his compassionate heart to the world. The man said while spreading his arms at the end for dramatic emphasis of his point. They even think that she, Haymitch jabbed a finger at Katniss. Is the one that will be able to do it. Not that I actually think that little chunk of ice in your chest could be thawed out by the sweetest of girls let alone silent but deadly over here. Both teens were glaring at him again but they remained silent. He had their attention and that was good, he needed to really drive this point home. They would need all the help they could get. You two play your cards right, and you'll be the favorites of everyone out there, and trust me, that is actually something you want whether you want to believe it or not. It will make things much easier on you. Haymitch tried to properly recruit them both to the idea. Sadly the District 12 tributes were extraordinarily stubborn this year. Naruto refused to play into this game. He didn't care about any of this sponsorship stuff or even really about the games, though he, like all the others, wasn't a fan of dying and would rather come out alive. Loudly pushing out from the table he stormed off to his room to try and think. The rest of the room slipped into silence as he left. Each of the remaining diners focused on their own thoughts. Katniss' mind drifted to the especially bitter winter that had hit the year before. She'd had a few small birds and a squirrel or two to cover a few weeks. Most days she found almost nothing to bring back and she had quickly run out of food for herself, her mother, and her sister. The winter before it despite it also being a lean year she had given Naruto a full pheasant she had scored one morning. She had a second larger one for her family, but Naruto had clearly needed it at the time. The next year she and her family only lived because Naruto kept bringing small game to them that he had caught in his traps. Rabbits, squirrels, fish, even the occasional bird from time to time. Sadly, Remembering those times killed her appetite and she quietly stood and slipped off to her room like her fellow tribute had. Hey Mitch could only sigh as he watched Katniss leave. He felt a severe headache coming on now and part of it centered around a blonde-haired man and red-haired woman he had known for years, and their painfully aggravating offspring. 
Turning to the last member of the room besides himself and the Avox servants Hey Mitch caught the upset expression on her face before she hid it well. You did good on their Effie. Really. They don't get it yet, but they will. You might have just saved one of their lives. Hamish awkwardly comforted the woman. She blinked at him in surprise for his words before smiling at him. It wasn't the broad, almost painful-looking one she used for public appearances and functions. It was a slight thing that showed her actual thanks for his words. The next day in the training room, Katniss watched as once again the careers dominated the combat stations. Cato spun around and hacked away at several training dummies with his sword, beheading on, taking the arms of a couple more, and finally ending with a vicious stab to the chest of his final target. Just like Haymitch had said, the careers were lethal. Katniss doubted they would hesitate in killing another tribute. She doubted even more that they would have any sort of difficulty doing it either. They seemed almost happy to be here, grinning and laughing with each other, even while knowing they would be trying to kill one another in a few days' time. The two careers from District 1, Marvel and Glimmer, seemed especially skilled with ranged weapons. Marvel's skill with throwing a spear was especially frightening as he proved to be extremely accurate with it. Glimmer on the other hand was skilled with a bow, though Katniss felt she was actually better than the girl from District 1. She didn't plan on revealing that though. The girl from District 2, Clove, was also highly skilled, though her abilities centered around knives, and throwing them. Every throw she took seemed like a kill shot, but Katniss couldn't help but wonder who was better. Her or Naruto. Katniss expected if it came down to it, Naruto definitely had the strength over the petite girl, but without seeing Naruto actually participate in the combat drills prior to the evaluation, like herself it remained a mystery just how they stacked up. Having spent enough time working on her snare making in the trap station Katniss had moved on to the knife station. Though this one was for hand-to-hand -hand combat rather than the accuracy drill that Clove was participating in. She spent some time examining the different knives, there were easily over two dozen different sizes and styles. Deciding on one she stepped away from the table and began running through the stances and moves she had once copied from her fellow tribute. His words about her stance echoing even now in her head. As she worked though she quickly noticed she had gotten a small amount of attention. Most worryingly the careers had stopped for a moment to stare and watch her as she moved. They grinned like hungry dogs as they watched and she couldn't hello but worry that she had somehow marked herself as easy prey for them. Her attention had been completely split between her audience of would-be killers and her own attempts at handling the knife that she didn't notice the presence behind her until a hand gripped her blade arm. Jolting and trying to twist to face this person she was shocked to see Naruto staring at her with what looked to most like a blank expression. It's alright, I'm just trying to show you the best method. Don't focus on them right now. Naruto said as he began guiding her back into the motions she had gone over, though at a slower more controlled pace. She quickly realized what she was doing wrong earlier as they slowly sped up. She could feel him pressed against her back lightly, his hands guiding her own. Katniss had to fight down the blush on her face at the closeness of air fellow tribute. It's good to hide your best skills for the evaluation, but you also can't let them see you do something badly. They'll pick you out and hunt you down before you even get a chance. They're called the career pack for a reason. They're wolves. Naruto said as he slipped away from her. Katniss remained silent continuing the exercise till she had it down, it was far more fluid, and she gathered, far more deadly than prior to Naruto's intervention to help her. It might have been embarrassing but at least it had actually helped her. The careers were no longer watching her, having taken to salivating over the poor kid from District 4 now. Haymitch nursed his flask of whiskey. Truth be told he always kept a stash of the stuff brewed from District 12 somewhere on him. He could enjoy the expensive wines and liquors that were popular in the capital but his favorite had always been and always would be the biting mountain whiskey from his home district. Looking around, the last living victor of District 12 took in the sights of the plaza he was in. A massive screen on one side showed the odds of each of the tributes. Naruto and Katniss were both in the upper middle portions of the chart, 
but Haymitch was pretty sure they'd jump up higher with the evaluations and the interviews that were to come. Glancing over he watched the capital citizens enjoying themselves. Kids making a game of playing the part of tributes killing one another, to the delight of their parents. Honestly he, like most citizens of the districts, understood where Naruto's dislike of these people came from. The thought of the boy had Haymitch taking another deep gulp from his flask. He had really fucked up on that one. Naruto wasn't family or nothing, but Minato and Kushina had been friends of his. They never said as much but he was certain that they would have wanted him looking out for their boy and had the situations been reversed they would have made sure any kids he had would be taken care of. Not that Haymitch would ever allow himself to have kids. He had been a tribute in the second quarter quell, the event for the 50th anniversary of the Hunger Games being that double the amount of tributes would be entered. He'd never allow himself to subject his own child to such a thing. Still, now, the kid he should have been looking after for his dead friends was now tribute like he had been. Seemed far more ready for it than he had been himself. Both of the kids this year did. That probably made it worse. He liked these kids and didn't want to see them killing, especially killing each other. More than that he didn't want to see them dying. Looking down at his still half-full flask, Haymitch tightened the cap. Maybe he couldn't protect them fully but he'd at least give them what he could. Finally deciding to embrace his mentor position. He couldn't do much to help them, but anything was better than the nothing he had felt he'd done so far he supposed. Tomorrow, they'll bring you in one by one and evaluate you. Haymitch explained to Naruto and Katniss. It was the final day of the training period and they had just sat down for dinner. Both looked only slightly nervous but underneath their outer exterior Haymitch could see the hints that the pressure was getting to them a little. He remained impressed by both of them though. They were tough kids. Good kids, out of aloof District 12's tributes the two of them probably had the best chances for the moment. Naruto and Katniss were giving him their full attention, especially after he waved off the Avox woman who looked to fill his glass with liquor. Naruto nearly even smiled at the sight. This is important because higher ratings will mean more and better sponsors. This is the time to show them everything. He leaned forward to make his point before pointing at Katniss. There'll be a bow. Make sure you use it. Naruto, he began turning to the boy. You make sure to show off your skills with a knife, both close hand to hand and with throwing. Both of you know how to scrap so show that too. He said before downing a glass of water. They'll start with District 1, so the two of you will be going very last. He sighed for a moment before chewing his lip in thought. I don't know how else to put this. Just make damn sure they remember you. With that the teens headed off to bed to try and catch some sleep before their evaluations in the morning. For both they were only able to get a handful of hours broken up by long periods of staring at their ceilings in thought. When they were taken to the training room this time they were made to stay in a dark quiet hall with benches on either side to wait their turn. Katniss had some nervous energy as she bounced her feet and fiddled with her hands looking around the room again and again. Naruto on the other hand sat silently staring at the floor, elbows on knees thinking about something. Whatever it was it had taken his attention from the oncoming evaluations. Katniss envied that a little. Both jerked their heads up at the sound of an automated voice calling for Katniss. Slowly she collected herself taking a nervous swallow and stood. As she began walking away though she stopped when Naruto called out to her and turned. Katniss, stay focused and shoot straight, just like back home. He advised with a rare small smile. She nodded hesitantly before taking a calming breath and heading into the training room with more confidence than she had beforehand. Once she had stepped through the door she paused for a moment and looked back. A part of her wishing she had said something to Naruto to reassure him like he had her but it was too late now so she could only continue to the space set up for her evaluation. Before her were a few racks of weapons but, to be honest the only one she saw was the bow and arrows. Picking them up and testing them a little she looked up at her evaluators and frowned. They weren't even paying attention to her. 
talking with one another and focused more on the drinks and treats brought out to them by their Avox slaves. Katniss Everdeen, District 12. She called out trying to make sure they paid attention. The only one that seemed truly interested was Seneca Crane, the game master. The rest now watched her, though they seemed rather uninterested by their expressions. Taking up her stance Katniss loosed an arrow down rang only for it to miss. The sharp laughter among the men and women on the platform above brought her attention from the target up to them as they no longer even looked her way. For a moment panic began to set in. She could feel the chance to prove her skill and make her mark like Haymitch had drilled into her head slipping away from her in an instant. Now not even the game master watched her having turned fully to converse with his fellow capital elite. Still she stepped back over, collected a second arrow and stepped up to the line before loosing it down range. This time, the arrow took the bullseye and she looked up to see if they had noticed her shot. Instead they had completely missed it, more concerned with their idle chatter and food than her skill. Again a hint of panic rushed through her before it was replaced by anger at the fact they dismissed her so easily. Like she was nothing to them. They crowded around and joked and laughed about the large roasted pig on a serving table. She could hardly believe the carelessness they treated her with. In a moment of either stupidity or genius she snatched up an arrow and drew back once more, this time not aiming for the targets, instead up at the evaluator's platform. With one shot she brought them all to silence, pinning the apple from the pig's mouth against the wall behind it. They stared down at her in shock and a hint of fear. Still enraged Katniss merely bowed in an exaggerated way. Thank you for your consideration. She snaked before beginning to storm off, only to stop herself and return the bow to its holder. Then she stormed off toward the exit. When Naruto's time came, the evaluators were much different for Naruto than they initially been for Katniss. She'd done them both a favor with her antics. Naruto tried desperately to hold in his laughter at the sight of the arrow pinning the apple to the wall. He hadn't known that she had it in her for something crazy like that. That was definitely more his thing. Naruto Namikaze, District 12. He called out with laughter in his voice, already grabbing their attention as he seemed to be treating things far less seriously than the ones that had come before him. Striding up to the line for the throwing knives in a flash of hands and blades he had quickly whipped out all but one each dagger sticking in a kill point on the dummies before he turned around and threw one backwards. This one wasn't a kill shot but it still caught the dummy in the gut, a painful injury that would bring most other tributes down so he could close in for the kill. He didn't wait for any more time instead moving on to the instructor who handed him a padded simulation knife while he took up his own. Naruto at first seemed to bull rush the man before he pivoted slightly and snagged the instructor's wrist with his free hand. He wasn't about to give up the chance to beat on a citizen of the capital and slammed his elbow viciously into the man's face before raking the simulation blade up the inside of his legs across his throat and with a twist forced him to his knees with his arm lifted up letting him jab the training knife under his arm. He released the man and kicked him away with a boot to the man's back sending him sliding against the polished floor before Naruto simply tossed the padded weapon away and stalked out of the room. Just like with Katniss the evaluators were silent. It seemed District 12 had far better prospects this year than they had thought possible. Naruto especially seemed to have a killer's bearing to him and while it would have normally frightened someone, the evaluators for the Hunger Games were instead practically drooling at the thoughts of the coming fights the two could end up in. Are you too crazy? Effie shouted at Naruto and Katniss, horrified by their behavior. Katniss had shot an arrow, inches away from Seneca Crane himself. Naruto had landing the instructor in the hospital with a dislocated shoulder and broken nose. I just got mad. Katniss tried to defend herself. Mad? Effie asked in bewilderment. What about you? Why would you do that to the instructor? What do you mean, I was just showing them what I could do? Wasn't that the point? Naruto sneered at her. Effie actually glared at him, nearly bringing a smile to his face. You realize that your actions react badly on all of us, not just you two. She harped on. They just want a good show, it's fine. 
Sinna tried to defend them. How about it's just bad manner, Sinna? How about that? Effie replied haughtily to the man. Why should we give a fuck about capital manners? We're dead or winners in a couple days. What does it matter to us if you think we don't have manners? Naruto asked. Effie blinked at him in confusion before she shook herself and let out a scoff of outrage. Turning she noticed Haymitch finally joining them all in the living room area of the apartment and decided to turn her attention to him since she was making no progress with the tributes or stylists. Well, finally. I hope you have noticed we have a serious situation. She hollered at him. Haymitch grinned and shot a thumbs up to the two of them. Nice shooting, sweetheart. He laughed as he joined them on the couch actually getting a couple of grins from the teens. You gotta tell me Naruto, bloodying up that capital ponce, how did it feel? He asked, how do you think it felt? Naruto answered back, getting a laugh from Haymitch in reply. I imagine it felt pretty damn good, kid. Haymitch said with a slight twinkle in his eye as if imagining it himself. I don't think that we're going to find this funny if the game makers decide to take this out dash Effie began to rant only to be cut off by Haymitch. On who? On her? On him? I think they already have. Loosen your corset, have a drink. He said. Haymitch turned his attention back on the two kids. How did they react when you shot the apple? They seemed kinda startled. Katniss said with a grin. I imagine so. And what was it you said afterward? Thank you Dash, he began. Thank you for your consideration. Katniss said with a small laugh, though there was a bit of embarrassment there as well. That's genius. Genius. Haymitch laughed out. I would have given anything to see it. Same for when you busted up that instructor. You kids are a riot. A little while later the group sat watching the reveal of the ratings on the television. Once again Caesar Flickerman was on screen hosting the show. This time a series of cars in his hand as he sat at a marble desk to read off the ratings for each tribute. As you know, the tributes were rated on a scale of 1 to 12. After their evaluation and three days of careful review. The game keepers would like to acknowledge that it was an exceptional turnout this year. He droned on and Naruto faded in and out of listening. He knew he and Katniss would be the last to go. Still he caught snippets as the program rolled on. From District 1, Marvel, with a score of 9. That wasn't all that surprising. Careers were deadly. From District 2, Kato, with a score of 10. The big dog in the games was only two away from a perfect score, again, Naruto wasn't truly surprised. Clove, with a score of 10. It seemed all four careers had nines or tens for their score. Next came the lesser districts. The young boy from District 4 scored lowly, and the red-haired girl from District 7 scored a meager 5. Thresh from District 11 had a strong 9 for his score, something that didn't surprise him really. He knew the big 18-year-old would be dangerous to deal with. From District 11, Rue, with a score of 7. He smiled slightly. He and Katniss had noticed the young girl trailing Katniss around a bit during the time in the training room and he was happy to see she had a pretty high score. Now our final district. From District 12, Naruto Namikaze, a score of 11. The room gasped at his numbers and Naruto was also wide-eyed. He had scored higher than all of the careers and was shocked. Naruto, excellent. Portia said with a smile sent his way and despite himself he couldn't help but return it. Bravo. Sinna said with a grin. Even Katniss patted him gently on the arm with a small smile. And finally, from District 12. Katniss Everdeen. With a score of, 11. Caesar said. Whatever else he looked to say was drowned out as the group cheered and Naruto shot Katniss a smile. She didn't seem to believe it. The two top names to win this thing. You two are going to go far. Haymitch said with a grin. Elevens. 
President Snow said with derision as he sat in his rose garden staring down Seneca Crane. Well they earned them. Seneca replied. One of them shot an arrow at your head. Snow pointed out in disbelief. Well, at an apple. Crane said with some nervousness in his voice. That was near your head. Sit down. Snow sighed, it was like he was talking to children sometimes. Seneca, why do you think we have a winner? Snow asked as he went back to trimming his roses. What do you mean? I mean, why do we have a winner? I mean if we just wanted to intimidate the districts, why not round up twenty-four of them at random and then execute them all at once? Be a lot faster. Snow asked, he sounded almost like a teacher lecturing a student. Seeing that Seneca was still confused he decided to give the man an answer. Hope. 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 It is the only thing stronger than fear. A little hope is effective, a lot of hope is dangerous. A spark is fine as long as it is contained. He explained. So. Seneca pressed. So contain. It. Snow commanded in a far less friendly tone than before. Right, the game master replied, swallowing down his nerves that sprung up at the tone of the most dangerous man in the nation. The majority of those involved with the District 12 tributes had gathered around a filled banquet table, laughing and drinking to celebrate the scores the two tributes had gained. It was rare enough for a tribute to get a score of 11, but for both tributes of a district to receive it and not be career tributes from District 1 or 2 was completely unheard of. Still while Effie, Protea, and Cinna laughed and chatted, Katniss quietly ate while sporting a small smile. As infectious as the happiness from the others was, she still felt the looming arena fights hanging over her head. Her high score didn't really make her feel all that much better than she had before. In all honesty she was just as vulnerable as before, except now she and Naruto likely had more sponsors looking to back them in the games. The teen was pulled from her thoughts as Haymitch entered the room. He had cleaned up somewhat and stopped drinking so much. His small grin wasn't even mocking like it usually was. Still, as Katniss looked at him she couldn't help but feel there was something in his eyes, maybe a trace of sadness. She wasn't sure what for. Maybe it was because he knew she and Naruto would be fighting in the arena soon. That likely both of them would be dead in a matter of days. Katniss had no way of knowing how close she was with that. Haymitch was feeling a bit of guilt at the moment but it wasn't specifically to do with the Hunger Games. Sure the thought of one of the teens at least if not both of them being killed soon bothered him but he had mentored enough dead tributes to be hardened against such things. No. His guilt came more from the conversation he had just had with Naruto. The reminder of his personal failings. Somehow they just compounded the feelings behind his professional failings as a mentor. Oh. Hey Mitch you should join us. We're having some of your favorite for dinner. Effie called out when she noticed the man. All right. He replied brushing his bangs out of his eyes. Where's Naruto? Katniss asked as the mentor sat down. He's in his room. Haymitch replied. What he didn't say was that Naruto had converted the bedroom into his own personal training area. Evidently the training given to all the tributes wasn't quite up to his normal routine in District 12. Not that he trained truly back home but he was used to climbing and hiking through mountains and over ravines for several hours a day. Not to mention he was known for getting into fights on a regular basis. Now, listen, tomorrow's the last full day before you are taken to the arena. They let us work with our own tributes right before the games, so you and I will be going down to the training room at 9 in the morning. Hey Mitch explained, what about Naruto? Katniss asked. He says he wants to be trained on his own from now on. I believe his exact words were along the lines of, I didn't need your drunk ass in 12 and I don't need it here. Or at least that was the part one remember. The old victor said. Katniss was quiet for a time. She could catch the flicker of hurt in the man's eyes as he repeated Naruto's words. 
she had suspected there was a bit of history between the two before. Not good history either. Naruto was tense typically but being around Hamich seemed to make it worse, almost as much as the capital citizens or the Avox servants. That being said she didn't like the idea of Naruto being passed over for training. It wasn't fair to the boy, and opponents or not he was still, no she supposed they weren't friends were they. They were more than just competitors though. She wouldn't let Hamich just throw him aside like he was already dead. You can't abandon him. Katniss said. The heat in Hamich's glare took her off guard when she said that. I haven't abandoned him, sweetheart. Hamich hissed at her. He doesn't want me training with him. This kind of thing does happen at this point usually. There's only one winner, right? Gone was the somewhat warm smile he had earlier and back was the sardonic grin he usually wore. Katniss could understand Naruto's distaste of Hamich, at least to an extent. He really was an asshole, he just had a way of getting under your skin. The room grew tense as Katniss turned back to the table. Hamich stared at her for a time before going back to eating. The rest of the gathered support team members didn't handle the atmosphere well either timidly glancing back and forth and avoiding Katniss' gaze when she looked up from the food in front of her. Who wants some chocolate-covered strawberries? Effie asked, trying to reignite a happier conversation. Oh, my, yes. Portia replied brightly. Please. Cinna chimed in. Both stylists were happy to move away from the discussion of the games. Neither was truly supportive of making children kill each other. Naruto grunted as he pushed through another set of push-ups. Since he was young, workouts or simply moving around helped him to focus his thoughts and clear his head. He knew he was passing up decent advice from Hamich but in truth, it wasn't a secret that by this point most mentors selected one of their district's tributes to focus on with the hope of victory. He wasn't one to be cocky necessarily but he felt Katniss could use the additional help from Hamich more than himself. Added on to that was the fact he didn't really want all that much to do with Hamich for his own personal reasons and the choice to go his own way from here on was easier than he expected. That actually was a bit of a lie. He had rarely been frightened in his life since the death of his parents, but now as the day of the games drew nearer, he felt the rising stress from what he would be facing coming on. He kept reassuring himself he had plenty of advantages over his competition. That Katniss herself was likely his biggest threat, but still, he felt the worry in the back of his mind. To actually contend with the thoughts of his death was a sobering thought. Naruto sped up his push-ups to force the thoughts from his mind. He didn't want to think about what was actually coming up. His focus needed to be on what he truly desired from this trip. The one positive from the whole of dealing with the airhead capital populace and being forced into a blood sport with other kids. He'd be speaking to an entire country from the biggest stage in Paynham. He'd be televised live with no censorship and could speak his mind and they could do nothing to stop him at all. It was nothing compared to the oppression the capital pushed onto the districts, but he would give anything for the chance to shame these people in their ivory tower. Even if it meant he would end up dying in the days to come. Not that he didn't hope to win and live of course, but he was willing to die if just for a chance to spit in the capital's face. It was the night before their final day in the capital. Naruto, Katniss, and the rest of the tributes had been forced into what Naruto considered ridiculous clothes once again for interviews with the Hunger Games host Caesar Flickerman. Outside in the stadium surrounding the stage hundreds, perhaps thousands of the capital's people gathered to watch the last big event before the start of the true games. Various capital elites, including several of the Hunger Games tribute sponsors filled the front rows of the crowd as the show began. Screens filled the waiting room Naruto and Katniss shared and despite their situation and looming time in the arena they couldn't help but be impressed with the size of the crowd. The interviews rarely had such large audiences, the tribute parade was one thing in a massive open-air avenue but the stadium was packed to the brim with people, some in the back having to stand for lack of seating. As the music blared, the game host sprung from his chair and welcomed the audience as they roared their approval. Welcome, welcome, 
Welcome to the 74th Annual Hunger Games. Caesar bellowed causing a new wave of raucous cheering from the crowd. Now. In about five minutes they're all going to be out here. All of the tributes that you've heard about from the reapings and from their escorts. Are you excited? The host called out, dragging out his final question to further amp up the crowd. Let me hear it. The crowd roared even louder. By now, the novelty of so many screaming people in one place had worn off for Naruto. The changing camera angles showing the smiling and cheering crowd's faces stirred bitterness in him once again and he couldn't help the small scowl that took over his face. He hated how much they enjoyed all of this. The laughter of Caesar Flickerman rang from the screen as if mocking him specifically. As the show got truly started Caesar began to calm the crowd down slightly so he could begin the first set of interviews. Ladies and gentlemen. It's truly time to meet with our contestants. As usual we'll be starting with District 1, but just to change it up a little why don't we give these fine young men an opportunity to go first. So starting us off from District 1 let's have a big round of applause for our first tribute marvel. Caesar called out getting cheers from the audience once again as the career tribute made his way onto the stage. Marvel was confident, bordering on cocky. Cheering along with the crowd and standing tall and proud. His interview was short and to the point and Naruto could tell the boy was sure of himself and his victory. After Marvel was his fellow district one tribute glimmer. She seemed just as confident as her colleague, but seemed less inclined to brag about it. Not that she didn't act plenty cocky with her answers to Caesar's questions, she just seemed content to answer what she was asked while Marvel had seemingly considered himself the star of the show. Are you prepared? Caesar asked her. Yes, completely. She responded with a shining smile. From there the host moved on to District 2. While District 1 had careers, Naruto knew those from District 2 were the truly deadly competitors. Especially the male tribute Kato. It's an honor to be representing my district. The athletic blonde said staring out over the crowd with a serious gaze. You're a fighter. Caesar commented getting a nod. I'm prepared. I'm vicious. I'm ready to go. The way he answered, almost giddy with excitement had Naruto on edge. The older boy had clear bloodlust in him. It had shown from time to time in their days in the training room, but as they grew closer to the games, Naruto could see the true level of it slipping through Kato's attempt at a stoic facade. District 2 had raised their career to be exactly what they wanted. An animal behind a handsome face. Clove, the girl of that same district, was much the same. However, Naruto could already see the sadism in her. Kato wanted only to kill, she would take pleasure in inflicting pain. A tiny thing, but he had no doubt he'd rather face Kato than her in the arena. Sadly he'd more than likely end up facing them both if they kept to their home district's usual tactics from the years prior. One by one the tributes were paraded onto the stage in what looked to the capital residents like elegant and fashionable clothes before pretending to chat with Caesar about how they would win. Most Naruto could read easily enough. Barely keeping their mounting fear in check to try and win themselves more backers. Others seemed focused and determined. None of the other tributes had handled things like the careers though, they knew they had the people's attention. They always did after all. That would be true if it wasn't for the mounting attention on Naruto and Katniss this year. Whether by planning on Effie's part or just luck, the mix of her interview and their high scores from the evaluation had brought the spotlight to District 12. The question remained if the teenagers could use tonight to really swing that in their favor. You can climb trees, you're pretty quick. And are you a hunter? A gatherer? Caesar asked the youngest girl, Rue. Naruto pitted the girl from the neighboring district. Finally, it was his turn. Last district, second to last tribute. As the usher pushed him forward Naruto took one calming breath before he squared his shoulders and pressed forward down the small curving hallway to enter the stage. He could hear Caesar in the distance and readied himself for the crowd. From District 12, District 12, 
you have come to know a little bit about him already, the bad boy of District 12. Let's hear a warm welcome for Naruto Namikaze. Caesar called while waving his hand back toward the entrance Naruto was using. Even after mentally preparing himself Naruto was a little caught off guard by the mixture of the crowd, lights, and deafening sound. Still he pushed forward, settling for narrowing his eyes when Caesar placed a hand on his shoulder and looked out at the crowd with a stone-like face. After a gentle nudge from the host Naruto followed Caesar to the seats sitting across from one another. Naruto took a moment to collect himself before locking eyes with the host. That was quite the entrance you and your fellow tribute made the other day in the parade. Caesar started with. Naruto was quiet though as he nodded. I guess. He finally said. You guess? Well you don't seem to feel very strongly one way or another it seems. Caesar said, getting a spattering of laughter from the crowd. Naruto fought back the sneer at that. Before clearing his throat and relaxing a little. He was where he had wanted to be, he needed to focus on why he wanted to be up here so badly. Actually, that couldn't be further from the truth Caesar. You want to know how I really feel about all of this? Naruto asked. He could see the small flicker of worry in the man's eyes, not enough for the cameras to catch but Naruto was right next to him. I think we all would, wouldn't we folks? Caesar quickly regained control and pushed on. All right then, straight to the point. Naruto felt that doing it quick and just saying what he wanted was probably best anyway. I despise you. I'm angry to a point that is hard to describe because I look around here and I see nothing but the spoiled and the rich who are planning on dumping children into an arena to fight to the death. Not just for the first time either, for the 74th time. I don't even know anyone from back home that is that old. I'm no saint, but I can still look down on you people. Naruto said looking directly out at the crowd. He expected booze, and maybe for things to even be thrown at him. Instead, after only a moment of silence they seemed to cheer for him even louder than before. Wow what a monologue. Caesar called out, clapping with the spectators. Naruto turned his gaze back to the man while blinking oulishly. It didn't make any sense. None of this did. You certainly seem like the roguish type. Still I wonder what you family back in District 12 thinks of your point of view? Caesar commented trying to keep the show moving on. For a second Naruto continued to be confused before Caesar's words registered in his mind. He had to fight off the cruel smirk that tried to plaster itself onto his face. Caesar really was the perfect host, setting him up like that so easily. He almost wanted to thank him. My family? What family? Naruto began bringing Caesar and the audience to silence. You know I would love to know what they thought of me right now too, but I don't have any idea. My father was beaten to death by a peacekeeper after demanding safer conditions in the mines when a collapse killed some of his friends. My mom was killed for trying to stop the beating. Naruto scanned over the quietly murmuring audience, a little happy that something seemed to get through their thick prissy skulls. That's truly tragic. I'm sorry for your loss. Caesar said, sounding genuine as far as Naruto could tell. I doubt that. He still remarked with a scoff. The people back home understand. Most of the other districts do too. People like me and Katniss understand each other but people like you have no idea. All you do is sit here in your ivory tower and mock the suffering of the rest of our country. There was a short beat of silence before Naruto relaxed into his chair again. They had quieted down, sure. But the crowd didn't seem guilty and ashamed like he had realized he was hoping for. They barely looked bothered at all beyond pitying glances sent up his way. It made his blood boil. The hypocrisy these people drowned in drove him crazy. You mentioned your fellow tribute Katniss Everdeen. Caesar began suggestively causing Naruto's eyebrow to lift in a silent question. The host motioned at the screens behind them that began showing clips and still images of himself and Katniss in the training room. 
Naruto hadn't realized it at the time but the times he had helped her at the hand-to-hand -hand terminal or the knife fighting station seemed far more intimate now. His chest pressed to her back as he carefully guided her in practice. The slight blushes on both their faces from the exertion matching his current complexion as he noticed just what Caesar was implying. This was all Effie's fault from her interview earlier during their time in the capital. Whatever my relationship with Katniss it's no one's business but ours. Even if it was the business of the public none of you would understand it any more than you can understand the feeling of starving. Naruto growled out lowly, but the mic easily picked up his words. Naruto, it seemed had said the perfect thing, if he had been trying to further win over the people of the capital. The women seemed to swoon and the men jeered loudly about being young again. Naruto stood out of frustration growing to fury as Caesar spoke as well. Ladies and gentlemen, our gruff survivor with a soft spot for his lady love, Naruto Namikaze. Caesar called out with a flourish of his hands. Naruto didn't look back as he stormed off the stage and back to the waiting area. He didn't need to. The roar of the crowd was deafening and told him everything he needed to know. The jokes by Caesar continued as the man said he'd be quick as possible with Katniss's interview so the pair could spend some time together getting yet another round of cheers and laughter from the audience. I spit in their face and they cheer me on and tease me about a pretend relationship. What the hell is wrong with these people? Naruto thought. He was completely baffled by the experience. That hadn't gone as he had planned for it all. Coming around the bend in the curving hallway he nearly ran into Katniss and Haymitch as he passed by. They greeted each other briefly before Naruto glances at the audience still seeming to be feeding into Caesar's hyping up of the false bond between Naruto and Katniss. They really are insane aren't they? I told them I despised them straight to their faces and they loved it. They make up that we're some secret lovers and they scream our names. I hate this place. It doesn't make any sense at all. Naruto grumbles. Haymitch looks his usual self, that is to say a mocking grin spreads across his lips and his eyes twinkle in amusement at the sight before him. Naruto wanted so badly to knock that grin off the man's face. He would have tried to do just that if it wasn't for Katniss' hand lightly gripping his forearm to reassure him. He didn't really know what to say to her. He felt stupid for letting it get to him but he would be lying if he didn't feel somewhat awkward around her now with the idea of the two of them in some sort of relationship between them having been essentially confirmed by his poor handling fo the interview. In the end, simply sighing long and slow to try and release his stress from this whole mess and giving his fellow tribute a reassuring nod was all he could do. With a final offering of good luck to her. Naruto watched as Katniss began her walk to meet with Caesar and start her interview. It was only then that Naruto noticed the camera crew nearby among the throng of support staff running the show. His eyes went wide for a moment before they narrowed to slits and he stalked toward the camera crew. Soon they were in full retreat as he demanded to know if they had been filming this entire time. Unknown to the boy from District 12, his very real outrage at the camera crew was being eaten up by the viewers who loved the drama of the situation. For Katniss, things were intimidating to say the least. She was just as unused to large crowds and attention as Naruto was. Thankfully seeing Naruto go before her had given a little more time to have her bearings when she finally did make her way to the seat beside the host. So that was quite the touching moment there backstage. Caesar began causing her to blink at him before noticing the replay of the recording of herself, Naruto, and Haymitch just moments ago. I guess. Katniss responded, causing Caesar and the audience to laugh heartily at the unintentional similarity between herself and Naruto in that moment. Just like a fairy tale story you too. Really you are. Like you're the beauty calming the beast's raging heart. What do you say folks? The screams and cheers were a clear affirmative to Caesar's question. I dunno about a beast. Katniss began softly grabbing both Caesar and the audience's attention once more. Naruto just comes off harsher than he is. He's actually really kind, 
you know he puts his name into the reaping jar the maximum number of times every year but he gives most of the money to families in the poorest part of our district. My own family even. You already know he brought my family food in the past thanks to Effie. As she spoke she felt more at ease and surprised herself about how easily she could slip into talking in front of so many people. An internal voice whispered that it was probably because she wasn't talking about herself at the moment. You know that sounds more like he has a special place in his heart for you rather than for people as a whole. Caesar pressed on with a teasing grin, getting laughs from his fans. Katniss blushed at the words and the thought of her fellow tribute in such a way and simply mumbled out a second, I guess, before clamming up slightly at the round of us she got from the crowd. This seems like just a bit too much to keep chatting about for now so let's move on. Caesar said seeming to take a bit of mercy on the poor blushing teen. You know, my heart practically stopped when the two of you came out of that tunnel during the parade and seemed to burst into flames. I have to know if they were real. Did you just have on a protective layer or something or was it all some sort of illusion? The man asked. They were real. My stylist Sinna came up with the idea. Katniss said regaining a bit of her composure. Having recollected herself, Hamish's reminders about performing to win more sponsors and supporters. Do you want to see it? Katniss asked with a pretend coy smile. Is it safe? He replied with a mock worry, getting a nod from the teen as she stood up to the applause of the crowd. Slowly at first Katniss began spinning. As she picked up speed and her dress flicked up slightly it seemed to catch on fire, growing bigger and brighter the faster she spun around. After a few more spins she had to balance herself, with some marginal help from Caesar before being led back to her seat. Of course the audience once more roared their approval. After Katniss regained her balance in her seat and the crowd quieted back down Caesar seemed to grow a more serious expression on his face. Katniss, you have been a real joy tonight, I just have one more question for you. It's about your sister. Caesar said as he took her hand between his own like he was comforting her. We were all very moved, I think, when you volunteered to take her place as tribute. Did she come to say goodbye to you after the reaping? He asked. Yes. Katniss said quietly, barely above a whisper. And what did you say to her before you left? Caesar asked. I I told her that I would win. That I would try to win for her. Katniss said after only briefly hesitating from the rapid changing of mood. Of course you did and try you will. Caesar said as he pressed his lips to her knuckles before suddenly lifting her hand high into the air like a champion. From District 12, Katniss Everdeen, the girl on fire. He shouted, getting cheers from the audience. When she came backstage she came across Naruto leaning against a wall. An odd look on his face as he stared at her. Katniss wasn't sure why but she stopped beside him and just waited silently along with him as they listened to the show outside the room begin winding down for the night. Why did you say all that nice stuff about me? Naruto asked her. Turning to look at him again still she couldn't read his expression. For his part, Naruto was doing his best to school his features so that he could try and get a read on her regarding her own thoughts. This whole day was outside of his comfort zone and he had definitely not expected Katniss to practically go up to bat for him with Caesar in front of the whole country. It was a weird feeling hearing other people talk about him like he had previously with Effie and now with Katniss. What, was I wrong? Katniss asked. From what he could tell though she just hadn't really thought much of it. Probably just her normal personality then. She did give out a lot of the game she hunted to those who needed it more in the seam after all. It really was probably something she would do just to be nice. Again it was an odd feeling. Naruto wasn't too fond of such oddness, and coupled with the weirdness of the people of the capital is all a bit much. Well hey Mitch said he'll see you in the evening. I guess they loved us. We're expected to have a lot more sponsors than most District 12 tributes could have imagined in the past. Naruto said. He didn't seem truly happy though. For Naruto he felt like he had missed his opportunity. His big chance to really shame the capital in the only public way he could. 
it had literally done nothing to them. They loved him for it. By now he was almost happy they would be going into the arena soon. It was late at night but Naruto couldn't sleep at all. He wasn't a coward, still he felt fear at the thought of the coming games. He'd watched them his entire life. No matter how prepared he was he could still lose and when he allowed himself to finally think about that possibility he felt that deep-seated desire to survive no matter what. Even if he had to kill others to do so, it felt selfish but he wasn't one to give up and let someone walk on him. Even if it was a fight to the death. What bothered him the most is that out of everyone in these games, he was likely the only one that had killed before. He knew what it felt like to end someone's life. Still he didn't really want that again. He hadn't particularly enjoyed killing before, though he had enjoyed killing the man who had murdered his parents. Naruto, sat silently watching out the window to the capital streets below as the people hollered and chanted. Just looking at them distracted him from his thoughts on his own mortality. Though it only did this by making him focus on his hatred for the capital. As if to distract him from his murderous thoughts toward the people below him a new presence made itself known with the quiet tap of feet against the floor. Hey! Katniss said quietly as she slipped into the window seating beside Naruto. The boy just nodded to her as he continued to stare down at the crowds of people below. Can't sleep either? She asked. Not a bit, probably come back to bite us in the ass tomorrow. Naruto huffed out with a smirk directed at Katniss. He liked the small smile she had as she bobbed her head in agreement. Look at them down there. Katniss said watching the crowds. Her smile slipped away and Naruto felt similarly to her as he glanced back down again. Yeah. They act like animals but look down their noses at us. It'll be different one day though. Naruto said quietly. When Katniss heard him, however, she could almost believe it. The pair sat in silence for a few more minutes before Naruto finally stood but stopped before he left. Starting tomorrow we may not be enemies off the bat but eventually we might have to fight one another. Just know that I want it to be the two of us as the final two, or at least for one of us to be the one going home. Try to get some rest. The first day is the bloodiest. He then walked off without waiting for a reply. Katniss watched him leave, pulling her knees up to her chest thinking about the fighting she would see tomorrow. Shooting a final glance at her fellow tributes back as he disappeared up the stairs she couldn't help but feel upset that they would end up pitted against one another at some point. May the odds be ever in your favor. She said sarcastically as she stood up to do just as Naruto had recommended and try to get some rest. The next day Naruto sat strapped into his seat on the hovercraft waiting for the various staff members milling about to complete their checks and last-minute injections. Those same injections embedded trackers under his and the other tribute skin. Naruto almost missed hearing the cheering of those in the capital. The flight was entirely too quiet. Not a word spoken beyond the simple commands from the game makers and peacekeepers that herded them around. Even after landing everything was quiet. Echoing footsteps down a hallway empty except for himself and the lines of peacekeepers that Naruto felt were a bit overkill by this point. Then, just like the hallway and the flight, he found himself in a silent room with nothing but the change of clothes for the arena. Durable pants and boots, comfortable shirt and a flexible waterproof jacket. It wasn't a lot but it was honestly a bit more than he had expected. He didn't waste any time waiting to change. It was something to try and focus his mind on. It didn't work well, his thoughts still drifting to the bloodshed that was coming in a mere few minutes. For a time he could do nothing but sit and wait. Arguably the most agonizing few minutes of his life, truth be told. When the automated voice called out thirty seconds he jolted at the sound, having gotten used to nothing beyond his own breathing. Slowly he stood and stepped over to the tube that would take him into the arena. At twenty seconds he couldn't help the urge to simply not step in. To simply not ride the narrow little elevator up that tube into the arena. 
he couldn't tell if it was the thought of him being seen as a coward for it or the fact he knew they would force him in one way or another that led him to stepping in when the voice hit the ten-second mark. As he was lifted up, for a brief second he was blinded by the bright daylight. The moment his eyes cleared he began scanning the clearing he found himself in. At the center of the circle of tributes was the cornucopia as Hamish and Portia had called it. Inside and around it were all manner of supplies and weapons. Less useful items were scattered in smaller and smaller amounts the further away from the metal shelter you went. Naruto didn't really bother with looking at the spears, swords, and other weapons near the center. Instead, not far from his position was a small bag of supplies along with three knives of different length and size. Scanning the competition he caught Katniss's eyes briefly before she glanced back at a bow and arrows near the very center of the clearing. Don't be stupid. He thought while shaking his head at her. He didn't want to fight Katniss in all honesty, at least not on the first day. As the counter passed the eight-second mark Naruto took a breath and settled himself into a ready position. He had to focus. He knew his objective. The bag just before him, he just had to get there quick and make sure he was ready to fight for it. The two nearest tributes to him would hopefully prove only marginal competition. To one side was the District 4 boy, the 12-year-old kid. On the other was the District 6 female. She seemed to be eyeing the same bag that Naruto himself had. For some reason he didn't want to have to kill anyone on the first day. But if she really tried to stop him from taking that, he wouldn't hold back. As the counter hit three second Naruto huffed out a final sigh at the thought of the coming fight. Them or me. He murmured to himself. The golden numbers continued their countdown from above the cornucopia. 3. Naruto braced himself for what he knew would happen. Readied himself to take the lives of others so that he could survive. He had the advantage. He just reminded himself of that again and again. He had the advantage. 2. If he could avoid it he wouldn't pick a fight with anyone today. If he could help it he wouldn't have to kill anyone, but if they got in his way they'd die. No matter who or why, they'd die so that he didn't have to. 1. At the sound of the horn Naruto bolted forward. He outpaced the girl from District 6 beside him with ease. He was easily ten full strides ahead of her when he made it to the single strap pack. It was mostly dark gray with a few bright red patches of fabric. Along the single strap designed to cross diagonally across the chest were three holsters with three knives of varying size. The first was a large hunting knife roughly a foot long with blade and handle. The second was a utility knife with a serrated saw-like blade. The last was a thin, narrow, blade no longer than his hand from wrist to the tip of his longest finger. Moving to sling the pack onto his back he had to yank it from the girl's hands as she tried to snatch it from him. Managing to wrap a hand around the strap the girl hauled at the bag with all her weight trying to free it from Naruto's grip pulling him off balance. The chaos spreading across the clearing holding the cornucopia began to grow in intensity as the small encounters between tributes quickly exploded into brutal fights to the Naruto though his focus narrowed entirely to this one pack and the girl trying to stop him from taking it. Regaining his balance Naruto jerked his arm back violently pulling the smaller girl into him and causing her to stumble. He didn't stop there though, she still held on to the pack after all. So fluidly releasing the snap of the largest of the knives Naruto slid it from the holster and in a single motion drove it hilt deep into the girl's neck. He didn't wait to see if she was truly dead before yanking the blade and pack free and bolting for the tree line. He had what he came for. Behind him things further devolved into bloodshed. Katniss similarly to Naruto had identified a pack of supplies closer to the edge of the clearing and gone after it. Unfortunately, much like with Naruto, another tribute had gone for the same gear. Unlike with Naruto though, Katniss was the smaller and physically weaker of the pair fighting over this piece of gear and soon found herself scrabbling on the ground with the larger form of the District 9 boy trying to pry the backpack from her hands. He had nearly done just that when he suddenly froze allowing Katniss the chance to pull the bag free of his grip. She was still shocked though when the boy pitched forward with blood spilling from his lips. 
As he fell Katniss noticed a large knife protruding from his back in District 2's female tribute, Clove closing on her readying a second knife for her. Luckily Katniss was able to shield herself with her backpack in the nick of time. The large utility knife sunk into the backpack's fabric but whatever damage it caused to the bag was better than what it would have done to Katniss. Deciding not to waste time trying to free the blade here Katniss scampered to her feet and bolted for the tree lean like Naruto and a handful of others had. Align the way running headfirst into the District 5 girl throwing both of themselves to the ground. Crawling to their feet both stared the other down with mixes of fear and anxiety clear on their faces. Katniss couldn't help but notice the narrow features of the girl's face and red hair reminded her of a fox and so she mentally dubbed her the eloquent name of Foxface. Foxface said nothing as she stared back at Katniss before finally turning and hauling ass deeper into the woods. Deciding it was a reasonable strategy, Katniss did the same, just in a different direction than the other girl. Back at the cornucopia things continued as normal for the first hours of every Hunger Games. The District 8 boy tried desperately to reach the spear, inches from his hand as Marvel, the boy from District 1 took his time to carve him up with a cookery knife. Sadly he never could reach the spear and his death was much slower and more painful than it needed to be. The career tributes weren't the only ones claiming kills for themselves though. A brief but vicious fight between the District 3 and District 4 girls left the girl from District 3 terribly wounded and unable to run. While her previous opponent had only fought her over some supplies, the tribute from District 5 was perfectly happy to take the opportunity to thin the opposition, ending the girl quickly with a thrust of a sword through the chest. The girl from District 4 didn't fare much better than her previous opponent either. Finding herself cornered by Cato from District 2 at the entrance to the cornucopia she stood little chance against the bigger, stronger, and better trained career tribute as they fought blade against blade. Unlike his fellow career tributes though, Cato found no added joy from torturing his victim. He was here for one reason and that was to kill everyone else and survive. After blocking a few poor swings from the girl, he disarmed her and drove his sword up through her chest, directly into her heart. Thresh, the first to actually reach the cornucopia and the most physically imposing of all the tributes, had grabbed several items from inside before making his way out again. He briefly found himself facing off the boy from District 10 before ending him quickly with a slash to the throat from the sickle he had chosen from among the weapons. Thresh hadn't waited around after that taking off, not into the woods but the tall grasses and reeds of the wetlands along the far side of the lake. The final victim of the bloodbath had been the unlucky boy from District 4. The youngest male tribute at only twelve he had done his best to beat most of the competition to the cornucopia and hide before attempting to slip out with a selection of supplies that would allow him to avoid the others for most of the games. Sadly, he wasn't near as stealthy as he hoped or needed to be and found himself trapped in the supply cache by all four of the career tributes. Cato at their head. The boy opened his mouth. Likely to beg for mercy or something similar but Cato didn't want to hear it and slashed the younger tribute across the neck and chest with a single strike leaving him to crumple to the grass below and bleed out. As Naruto picked his way along the rocks of a ridgeline he heard the cannons begin sounding off marking the end of bloodbath and counted them mentally to note the number of deaths in the first few minutes of their hunger games. 6, 7, 8. He counted. Less than I expected. That'll just draw things out though. He thought aloud before setting back to what he was doing. He needed to keep his mind focused otherwise his thoughts drifted to the girl from District 6 who looked so frightened in her last moments. He had thought killing now would be easier after what had happened with the peacekeeper back in District 12. It hadn't in the slightest. So he was forced to rely on his tried and true method of distraction when dealing with emotional turmoil. He made himself focus on his task at hand for just that reason. Currently he needed to find shelter, preferably with easy access to water and food and plenty of concealment. As time wore on he started fretting about not finding any shelter before dark. Already the sun, or whatever was lighting the area being as the gamekeepers probably had constructed this entire place artificially. The odds seemed to actually be in his favor as he found exactly what he needed. 
a narrow cave spot with a small pond to one side of the rock outcropping that concealed the entrance. Coming around a corner Naruto could even sleep a small distance up off the ground as there was a rough shelf-like outcropping that he could sleep on without being seen even by someone who found the cave. Sadly just finding the spot was only the start. Settling in Naruto didn't allow himself time to do more than catch his breath before he started taking inventory of his equipment. As he had noted before he had three good knives to work with. The first, largest one was coated in blood up to the hilt now though, and it was already beginning to dry. He'd try and wash it off in that pond later. For now though he needed to focus on inventory. Alright, three knives, one hunting knife for cleaning game, a camping knife for utility, it's more like a saw really. A little knife for gutting fish. He whispered to himself as he unsheathed each blade and inspected them. The smallest had been a bit of a surprise as it had a gut hook on the back side tip for would come in handy when he needed food. Let's see what else we got. He wondered aloud as he opened the bag and smiled slightly. Two ration bars to replace a couple meals, I'll save those for now. An empty canteen, waterproof matches, a small roll of bandages, and a folded up waterproof tent liner. Really he had a good haul. This would do great to start with. Putting everything away he was about to sling the pack onto his shoulder before noticing the bright, neon red patches on the bag. Grimacing at the thought of them giving him away too easily among the darker colors of the trees he started feeling around the patches to see if cutting them out would make the bag fall apart. After a couple moments he smiled to himself faintly once again. Yeah, I think the odds might actually be in my favor. He whispered as he drew the small knife and began carefully cutting only the colored patches out. Rather than waste them and slip them into his pockets and only then slung the pack on. From there Naruto went about prepping his newfound home. Filling his canteen with fresh water he then turned to making a handful of different traps all around his new camp. Most were basic snares that he hoped to catch some kind of animal in. Nothing that would be too difficult to free yourself from with a blade. The second set though wasn't meant for hunting. It was for defense only. Using sharpened stakes Naruto had prepped several deadly and pretty well hidden traps he hoped at least kept other tributes hesitant to draw near his cave. Finally coming back to his cave Naruto set about the final bit of his prep. Sharpening some longer sticks into spears he went fishing and scored a pair of good-sized fish. Being mindful to move away from his actual campsite to start a small fire he cleansed and gutted the fish before starting the fire and cooking himself some food. Stomping the small fire out he slunk back to eat half of one of the fishes before tucking the leftovers into the empty secondary pocket on his backpack. He would have preferred to have something to wrap his food in but beggars couldn't be choosers as the saying went. Now all that was left was to settle in for the night. Naruto didn't remember dozing off. He just recalled laying down for a while before suddenly he was jolting awake. It took a little bit to regain his bearings but any fog caused by sleep cleared out the second the second scream reached him. He shot to his feet and crept to the mouth of the cave to try and pinpoint just where it came from. The third pained cry helped him to figure out where they were. They were close. Way too close for him to be happy with it. Their screaming would draw others to him like moths to a flame. He needed to put them down. Slinking along in the dark Naruto soon found his way to the perimeter he had created with the traps. The screaming had thankfully stopped but he could still make out a whimpering sound not far from where he was. He crept quietly on from there. He was sure that others would be on him at any moment. Just using whoever it was in his traps as bait to lure others out and catch them unprepared. It's what he would do, after all. What better way to thin the competition out a bit than by picking others off while they were distracted by either trying to help someone else or when they thought they could get an easy kill. So he waited for a while when he finally reached the spot. It felt wrong, but he assured himself it was the smart play. He listened as the girl rasped and whimpered from the pain of his trap. She had attempted to break free at some point but had stumbled and made it worse in the end. Pinned up against a tree with three long wooden stakes embedded into her waistline. Still Naruto continued to wait. 
after what he was sure was an hour though he couldn't take it anymore and slowly began approaching. By now even the whimpering had stopped and only short rasping gasps for breath even showed she was alive. That and her eyes had been locked onto Naruto since the moment he stepped out from the brush. When he finally stopped beside her he couldn't help but frown at the state of the girl. It was only a matter of time before she died, but he had no doubt she was in extreme pain. Any sound she made now to try and speak to him came out as nothing but unintelligible croaks and gasps. There was nothing he could do for her. At least that's what he tried to convince himself. Still he felt the need to try and help her out of his trap. To try and fix her injury. The sensible part of his mind reminded him it wouldn't matter anyway. She would die whether he tried to save her or not. He was supposed to kill her anyway. He had to kill her to win and survive. That didn't make him feel all that much better. I'm sorry. He said quietly. Reaching around her head he placed his knife's point against the soft spot at the back of her head where her skull met her neck. Hesitating only a moment longer to clench his eyes closed and avoid the pleading look in her glassy eyes he jammed the blade upward causing the girl's body to jolt and twitch violently for half a second before it became completely still. I'm sorry. He repeated. He began cleaning his blade and then going through what little the girl had in the way of supplies. Less than what he himself had it seemed. Prying her loose from the trap. Naruto reset the mechanism before dragging the corpse off the easier path and a little further into the woods. It wasn't much but he used the girl's jacket to cover her face at the least and left her in a somewhat respectful position. It was the best he could do and better than what most of the contestants in the games could hope for. After returning to his little safe house Naruto started bedding down for the night. Unlike before when he had the stress and crash from his adrenaline rush, Naruto struggled for some rest. He tossed and turned as he tried to sleep. Every time his eyes closed he saw the faces of the girls he had killed before him. Unlike the peacekeeper they had done nothing but stand in his way. It didn't matter how much he told himself he had no choice, they were still there. Every time he closed his eyes. Watching. His grief ebbed away after a few hours though giving way to indignation over the idea of them haunting him. Even if it was just the memory of killing them that did. If anything, it solidified his resolve toward his goals even more. Made him want to win and live even more. Live, because killing them had to be worth something. He had to be worth something. With those thoughts replacing the haunting figures of his victims, Naruto finally succumbed to sleep. It wouldn't be near as restful as he would have liked but it was sleep, all the same. In another corner of the forest Katniss had scaled a tree to use for her own shelter. Up off the forest floor in a place where other tributes were far less likely to look. Using her rope she nabbed to tie herself to the thick branches she began to nod off in sleep. Until she noticed the light not far from herself of another tribute starting a fire. She almost felt pity for whoever was stupid enough to light a fire while being hunted byt he careers. Almost, in the end it just made fewer people she was likely to fight to make it out of this arena alive. It didn't take all that long for the predictable result to occur. Maybe an hour or an hour and a half at most. A sharp scream followed by begging and more screams was all she heard before laughter echoed up to her. That sickened her. The careers were enjoying themselves. It probably should have been expected. They were made for this sort of thing, it was the peak of their lives. The greatest achievement they would ever have. Everyone else was pretty much prey to them. Well except maybe her and Naruto. Soon she found herself holding in her breath as the career pack passed directly underneath her hiding spot. Laughing and joking. Mocking the pleading of their latest victim and enjoying their time together. They acted more like they were on a camping trip together. The way that the District 1 girl that had the bow she wanted so badly hung off of the District 2 boy reminded her of seeing couples that snuck off to the edges of the District back home for some time alone. Once they passed by she let out a breath of relief. She needed to move further away from the arena center first thing in the morning. 
they would probably start some kind of patrol or hunting pattern to find other tributes before too long. Settling back down for some rest she was interrupted once again by cannon shots showing that midnight had come at last and the first day had ended. Unlike the rest of the days, rather than blasting after the death of each tribute killed, on the first day the cannons only sounded off at the end of the day with a full tally of the initial bloodbath and the first handful of contestants. She decided to count along with the blasts. She wasn't sure why she really cared beyond knowing how many others were left to fight with. One after another they sounded. 1. A single beat of silence. 2. Another. 3. On and on until she counted to 9. Already nine of the contestants were dead within the first twelve hours of the games. She couldn't really decide if she wished it were more or less. Logically they'd all have to die, so she should hope for more. It felt wrong to wish for that to be the case though. After a long pause from the cannons, signifying they were finished marking the dead, the national anthem of Paynim played loudly and the sky seemed to light up with the holographic faces of the deceased one after another. Katniss watched them pass by. A part of her worried her fellow tribute from Twelve would appear. Like earlier, her logical mind almost wanted him to appear. She dreaded the idea that someone from home would be the last obstacle between her and returning to her family. When Naruto's face didn't show up she sighed in relief. No matter how much the idea of fighting him bothered her she was still happy he was alive in the end. Forcing the thoughts of the boy in her mind down she tried to get some sleep before the sun would rise and she needed to be on the move once again. Hunger Games Hosting Booth Capital Throughout the whole day Claudius Templesmith and Caesar Flickerman watched the games along with the rest of the country. Weighing in with commentary, comparing moments to prior year's games, and giving their opinions on the decisions being made by the tributes in real time. As the clock struck noon and the tributes raced off of their pedestals in various directions they applauded loudly along with the people of the capital. As the first fight came onto the screen they watched Naruto and the girl from District 6 struggle for the bag with knives. Oh that might be a poor choice on her part. Naruto was rated at an 11 for a reason. Caesar said with a sense of trepidation in his voice. Oh. They're as if to prove your point. Claudius called out in excitement as Naruto drove his blade into the girl's throat. That's our very first fallen tribute for the year. No doubt it won't be the last one today, it is called the bloodbath. Caesar added. The hosts continued giving commentary as the team struggled against one another fighting to the death. They applauded Katniss as she caught a knife thrown by the District 1 tribute, Clove, by using her bag as a shield. Another great display from one of our District 12 tributes. That might have been some luck but I think the real credit can go to her quick reflexes. Caesar said. Hmm you're probably right. Either way, with that knife added to her supplies she is better off than she was with just that bag of supplies. Claudius responded. No doubt about it. Caesar said with a sure nod. Oh. Tell me if I'm wrong Caesar but it seems both our highest rank tributes have a similar strategy for the day. It does look that way. For all of you at home who haven't watched as closely as you should be. Caesar gave a mock scornful look toward the camera crew as he said that getting a chuckle from Claudius. Both our District 12 tributes this year have truly broken the mold with their threat ratings. Both Naruto Namikaze and Katniss Everdeen are the first from District 12 to receive ratings of 11. Only one from the highest threat rating on the scale. It's actually unheard of for both tributes from the same district to receive such a rating. Now, as Claudius mentioned it seems both of our District 12 tributes are choosing not to engage in the bloodbath and are instead only grabbing a handful of supplies before retreating into the first two, I can only assume, hide. Caesar continued. That's right, though I wonder if it will pay off for them in the end. As with most years the career tributes from District 1 and 2 will likely establish control over the cornucopia and hoard the the supplies for themselves. It will be interesting to see if that comes back to bite them in the future or not. Claudius put in. Agreed. 
Let's see here, oh now it seems the initial struggle is beginning to wind down. Six tributes already slain, did you see that one by Thresh from District 11? I'm not even sure that he meant to kill his opponent. Caesar said as the different camera feeds on the screen behind him cycled through showing the carnage of the initial fighting. Oh dear, look there Caesar. Hmm. Aha, the young boy from District 4, sadly I don't think he has been as sneaky as he thinks. And there they are, Cato of District 1 has spotted him clearly and with that the bloodbath truly comes to an end with a total of seven fallen tributes. A surprisingly lower number than what I was expecting I must say Claudius. Caesar said as he continued scanning through the camera feeds on the screen. Undoubtedly Caesar with so many higher threat level tributes I expected more aggression. Then again part of those higher levels might be from cautious natures or other reasons. Though the exact reasons behind a tribute's ratings are of course kept confidential with the game makers and senior sponsors. Claudius responded. Well, the first day is still far from over and as we can see some of the surviving tributes are already in rather dire straits. Some, though, look to have things well under control. Very true. Once again the tributes from 12 proving why they have gotten such high ratings on their threat levels. Katniss clearly moving through those trees like she has done it her whole life and Naruto seeming to already be setting up a base camp of sorts with some very deadly looking traps. I wonder if they will be of more use getting him food or thinning his opponents out as the game's progress. Caesar replied. So the commentary continued with short breaks from time to time as the commentators rested when need be. For hours little seemed to happen with most of the excitement having slowed down following the bloodbath. When the girl from District 9 walked into one of Naruto's traps they chatted for quite some time about the effectiveness of his traps. They also talked about their theories for why he waited nearby as the girl suffered, impaled by a wooden spike. I'm telling you Claudius, he is waiting for other to hear her and investigate. He is using her like a worm on a hook to lure in more prey. I think Naruto could have been our first ever 12 rating in reality and he just didn't show his full abilities to the judges. Caesar argued. Maybe, maybe, or he could just be being cautious. More than likely he realizes the most likely to investigate the sound would be the career pack alliance that formed early on. As high of a rating as he has, armed with only a couple of knives against all four better armed career tributes would be practically suicide. So he is waiting for them to come and go if they do hear the tribute in front of him before he acts. Claudius replied. That is fair. I suppose we will just have to ask him if he should win the games, what was going through his mind at this time. Caesar said. True, oh there he goes, now he is moving. They watched as Naruto Mercy killed the girl and arranged her body respectfully before withdrawing with what few additional items she had on her. Now that is something you rarely see in the games. A skilled tribute with respect for their fallen opponents. His escort really was right about him, he is a sweetheart inside that rough exterior. Claudius said with an almost sad tone. Truly. That being said, I am curious as to how he and Katniss will handle one another should they encounter each other in the games. Caesar wondered aloud. As they continued to watch they witnessed the murder of the District 10 girl. Even during the brutality from the career tributes on display they didn't stop with their idle comments, remarking as if watching a normal sport and not a young girl being butchered. I think that's going to be the last one for our first day. Claudius said. Yep, and as if on cue Claudius there are the cannons for today. Nine total tributes fell within our first 12 hours of the games. Like we mentioned early it was not as many as expected but I have no doubt we'll be seeing more action in no time at all. Caesar said as the program cut to a series of advertisements for the capital and propaganda for the districts. The rest of the night would be thankfully quiet for the tributes. Fitful rest for several hours until the sun rose for them and the games picked up speed once again. At dawn on the second day, Naruto was already awake. He'd hardly slept at all following his dealing with the girl in his trap. It didn't help that while likely better than what most of his fellow tributes were dealing with, Naruto's cave was anything but comfortable. 
at the least though it was dry. After checking his traps and the perimeter around his hideout, Naruto chose to head out and forage for some kind of supplies. He had food stored up now, at least enough to make it for a while if he was holed up inside his cave. Still it was always better to have more supplies rather than less. Making his way through the woods, the team couldn't help but take in his scenery. The arena really was a beautiful piece of land. The fact that the capital had the technology and resources to create a huge area of completely controlled nature, but chose to use it to make arenas for teenagers to kill one another would have felt shocking if he hadn't lived the entirety of his life under their thumb. Foraging wasn't as difficult as he had expected. That is, it wasn't as difficult for someone who knew the edible and poisonous foods apart. This false forest was filled with as many berries, mushrooms, squirrels and birds as the real thing. It might have even been more verdant than the woods back home in District 12. There was even signs of larger game from rabbits all the way up to deer. He contemplated tracking the deer, but decided against it. Even should he manage to track it down, which wasn't something he was especially skilled at compared to say making traps, what good would having so much food do for just himself over the course of the games? Even hunkered down into his hidey hole, he doubted he could eat even half the beast before it went bad without some way to lengthen how long it would be edible. Not that he expected the game makers would let him remain hidden away and not give them some epic showdown with another tribute from time to time. Some sort of sporadic earthquake to collapse his cave and take away his food to force him into fights for more. Or maybe some sort of storm to flood him out. Either way he knew they had complete control here, and as little as he cared about giving them the show they wanted so bad. To go against the game keepers was the same as slitting his own throat though it would likely be less painful to simply kill himself. Having been foraging for a good two or three hours, Naruto decided to make his winding journey back to his cave. No straight paths that could be easily followed and doing his best not to leave behind a trail to be tracked back either. It was while going out of his way to cover up his own tracks that he found those of someone else. A smaller footprint, either a girl or one of the youngest among the contestants, traced with blood whoever it was had been badly hurt. They likely wouldn't live much longer if they were in fact alive now at all. Internally his mind warred with itself on what to do. It could be a chance to collect some more supplies if whoever it was had managed to get things from the bloodbath the day before. It also likely meant they wouldn't put up much of a fight if they were still alive, though he honestly hoped they weren't. The issue was, he could be reading these signs completely wrong. The blood might not even be theirs. Perhaps it had been from some trophy or supplies pulled off the corpse of their last opponent. It also went without saying the longer he was away from his cave, the higher chance his small camp could be raided without him there to defend it. Even with the traps, no place was impregnable. Clenching his eyes tightly closed for a moment to try and focus down on an answer when opened them again he was honestly a bit surprised with what he decided. He was a reckless person by nature but even for him this felt like an unnecessary gamble. Yet by that simple thought he knew his mind was made up. In the long run, the reckless decision would be to not at least investigate. It would be annoying to miss out on possibly life-saving tools or supplies due to being too afraid to even check. So, it was from there that Naruto began picking along the same path as this possibly wounded or dead tribute every few feet finding more and more markers of them passing by. Even at one point finding a wrapping from some bandages they had simply left behind. Whoever it was had definitely been injured. It looked like they had fled this way from the bloodbath the day before. They'd been smart enough to not take a straight path but had left plenty of a trail that anyone paying attention could have followed them. Something that had Naruto even more fidgety about the situation he was getting himself into. He might be the only one on the trail at the moment, but how long would that last? Was he even the only one trailing the injured tribute or was he walking into what amounted to a trap? Doubts and questions filled his head as he continued on. Every step feeling like he was about to walk into a pitfall and be trapped by the career pack. Looking back over his shoulders, again and again feeling imaginary eyes trailing his movements. 
or at least imaginary eyes in the forest. He knew that hidden cameras all around him followed his every movement. The viewers seeing him hunting another person down. That thought made him stop for a moment as he faced the reality that he wasn't mercy killing another person or fighting to survive, but actively hunting an injured person down to kill them and take their things. The mental image of himself doing that seemed so unreal, but looking at his situation, that was exactly what he planned. From the very beginning after finding their blood. He intended to kill whoever it was to make it easier on himself, even though he had enough to live off of, possibly for the rest of the games. After doing his best to come to terms with that realization, and not truly succeeding, he pressed onward. The blood was far less easy to find now. Most of it being stopped by the bandages, no doubt. Still, whoever it was they had lost too much blood by now. They were stumbling through the woods. The path was just as clear as it was when it was outlined in red. It didn't take much longer for Naruto to finally find the tribute he'd been hunting. She was worse off than he expected her to be but she wasn't dead yet. The girl stared back at him, much like the one from the night before. Too weak to resist whatever he decided. It was weird that the thought that killing her in this fashion, like releasing her from her pain, was something that made him happier. Not to have to kill someone but that it would be more of a mercy than anything. Taking a knee beside the girl he looked her over a bit more carefully and could tell she probably got cut the day before during the scramble right at the start. She had hardly anything in the way of supplies except for a few more bandages and even a couple of water purifying tablets. To have been practically killed for so little gain seemed especially sad to him. Can you speak? Naruto asked as gently as he could. Yes. She croaked, though her voice came out hoarse and harsh. Like two dry stones raking across one another. The boy nodded at her before fishing out his canteen and undoing the lid gently lifting her head to drink a little of his water. He didn't have a lot. He'd need to filter more from the pond later, but he couldn't stop himself from giving her some kind of comfort. Did this happen at the cornucopia? He asked as he put away the canteen. His response was just a weak nod of the head. Who got you? He asked again, just trying to keep her company and ease her passing he supposed. Or maybe it was more for himself. The boy from two, he cut me with a sword but had to fight someone else while I ran away. She replied after clearing her throat. Then gave him a raised eyebrow. Why are you helping me? She asked. I'm not. He replied with a sigh making her tense up. I can't I mean. You've lost too much blood. Even if you hadn't were opponents you know. He continued somberly. Oh. She replied simply as she sagged, less in relief and more in resignation. For what it's worth I'm sorry. Probably doesn't mean much but it's all I have to offer, that Anne. Naruto said as he shifted to fully sit next to the girl his knife catching the light to glint and show her just what he meant. She said nothing and the pair simply sat for a time in the silence. Him staring off at the treetops, and her fighting to remain awake, rasping for breath. Do you have anything for the pain? She finally asked, having grown so tired of the stings and ache of her wound and the exhaustion it brought with it. Funny how the rest of her body all felt so numb except for the part she wished did right now. I'm sorry, I don't. Just whenever you're ready I can, well I can make it as painless as possible. He replied looking down to meet the girl's eyes. At his response all she could do was let out a choked sob and nod her head. Just do it. She said quietly, clenching her eyes closed. Naruto took a second to look down at the girl and as he pushed his way up to his knees again he let out a long sigh. Okay. He said as he placed the knife in position beside the back of her neck. He mentally scoffed at his words. The last thing this girl hears in the world, an awkward okay, as he mercy kills her. Pushing the thoughts aside he shoved forward roughly embedding the blade to the hilt in the back of her skull. Her eyes flew open and a strangled sound escaped her lips before her eyes rolled back and she went limp in his hands. Wrenching the knife free as carefully as he could, 
Naruto covered the girl with her jacket as he had for the one previously and nearly flinched at the sound of a cannon booming in the distance. Collecting up the supplies he doubled back and around through the woods back to his hideout. He needed to wash some blood off him and purify more water, but what he wanted to do was curl up and rest for a while. He was full of energy still, but emotionally killing a defenseless girl was one of the most taxing things he'd ever done and now he'd done it three times. Katniss sprinted as quickly as she could as the wall of flame behind her engulfed the forest at an unnatural rate. She had no doubt the gamekeepers were hurting her. As terrifying as the thought of running headfirst into the career pack was, it was definitely more agreeable than being burned alive. She had been trying to distance herself from the center of the arena by as much land as possible and clearly the powers that be hadn't approved of her decision. Now though as she ran they seemed to want her headed to a specific location as any time she tried to veer off in other directions a random tree would seem to fall in front of her. Or a deep ravine would suddenly appear where she didn't recall one being on her walk through the area earlier that morning. Added onto the actual balls of fire that occasionally shot out of the pillars of flame chasing after her, and her situation was dire. Extremely so. It grew only worse when she dodged around a falling tree only to nearly catch another ball of roaring flames to the face. Instead leaning away just in time the ball of fire impacted against a wall of stone she had been running along splashing her with whatever fuel was used to keep the fire burning. A hole had been burned into her pant leg, halfway up her thigh and the red and bloody meat of the leg itself had been seared painfully, some of the cloth of her pants burning into the fresh wound. Katniss couldn't even attempt to suppress her cries of pain from the wound as she screamed at the agony. The sizzling of her burn only making it that much worse as panic began to threaten to take hold of her. Her first instinct was to grab onto the injury but she managed to stop herself with her hand hovering just above the wound. Hissing through clenched teeth and succine in breath like she had just come up for air from underwater, she managed to force her way onto her feet just barely. The girl had to stop for a moment then. Trying to force up the willpower to keep running with the pain coursing through her body making her want to do nothing but curl up and rest or tend to her injury. The game makers would give her no such respite though. Hurling yet another ball of flames directly for her. Katniss forced herself into a half leap, half drop from her place against the rock sending herself rolling down the small hill she had been forcing her back into motion. Managing to overcome, at least for now, the pain she felt. Katniss was on her feet and rumbling, or a sort of hobbled stumbling through the brush in front of her. The thick foliage and haze of smoke made the woods into a maze now, but she couldn't stop running. The crackling roar of flames continued on behind her, no doubt closing in more and more. Onward she stumbled until finally she found a cold pool of water at the base of several rock outcroppings. The fire was a good distance behind her, and now that the smoke had begun to lift, likely was burning out thanks to the game makers. They couldn't have a simple fire grow out of control and ruin the show after all. Taking just a moment to try and rest and soother her leg in the cool water, Katniss nearly cried as she heard the sudden sound of voices nearby. She was already moving again by the time the career pack rounded the bend and spotted her starting to hoop and holler as they chased race to catch up with her. Somewhere. No doubt the gamekeepers were prepping her cannon shot and portrait for the night's showing in the sky. The idea she could somehow fight off all four of them while they were already armed was laughable at truth being that she didn't stand a chance if she wasn't exhausted and injured. In her current state it would hardly be a challenge for the careers. All she could do was run for it and hope, pray even, that something would give her an advantage or a distraction to slip away from her pursuers. She didn't even notice the bloodstained tree trunk and disabled trap nearby the rocks as she ran. Unknowingly taking a path that had claimed the life of another tribute already but was now safe thanks to their mistake. The moment he had seen her fall into the pool beside his cave he had begun moving forward to help her. He wasn't sure why, they would have to fight each other in the end but he wanted to help her. That was enough, he supposed. He could tell by the way she moved she must have been hurt by that sudden firestorm just beyond the nearby river. He already was pulling out some clean water and bandages in case she needed them when he froze just after she did. 
the voices of the career pack weren't quite clear enough for him to pick out what they were saying but he knew them the moment he could hear the sound bounce off the rock walls of his cave. Watching Katniss rushing to try and escape he began rushing to get a small pack around, shove in a couple ration bars the bandages and water along with his knives into place before stopping just in the shadows of the cave's entryway. The shouting and hollering of the careers grew closer and closer until it was right on top of him. Then, they began to drift further and further as they gave chase to his fellow tribute from District 12. That was when he took off. Following after the four hunters tracking down Katniss, himself tracking them down. He wasn't certain what he would accomplish against four better armed and trained career tributes, but something felt like it had to be better than nothing. Sitting in his cave and letting them hunt down and butcher Katniss just wasn't something he could allow himself to live with. The thoughts on why exactly would thankfully not come at the moment but when they did they'd crowd his head taking up all his attention. Naruto was surprised he caught up to them as easily as he did. Even more so that they hadn't noticed him. Then again they were so concentrated on Katniss that he supposed that he shouldn't have been that shocked. The issue now was what exactly was he going to do. He suddenly realized how useless charging in to try and take down all four would be. They'd kill him then they'd find and kill Katniss. It would be a useless gesture and they'd both be dead for nothing to show for it. After thinking a moment he managed to come up with a better plan. Using the TRM better very loosely as it was essentially the same plan except for one main difference. He had no intention to actually fight them. He'd come and see if he could at least hurt one of the careers and run, as fast as he could, directly past them in a different direction from Katniss. God this is such a stupid idea. He screamed at himself in his head as he picked up speed, drawing the largest of his knives at the same time that he burst from the brush behind the career tributes making them spin around and face him with shock clear on their faces. It's the other one. He faintly registered the District 1 boy shouting as they all readied their weapons to fight him only for Naruto to suddenly shift course making a vicious swing with his blade at the closest of his enemies. The unlucky recipient of a large slice down her arm being the girl from District 1. Wasting no time the moment, Glimmer began screaming bloody murder, Naruto was turned and making a beeline for the tree line once again catching them off guard with his decision. Coward. One of the boys screamed after him. You two stay after the girl, Clove, and I will get him. Kato, the de facto leader ordered before he and his fellow District 2 tribute took off after Naruto. The sound of his pursuers died down as the sounds of the woods took over. The rush of wind in the trees, his own breath and footfalls, and the snap and crack of twigs as he rushed through the greenery drowning out everything else. Everything except a familiar sound of metal cutting through air. Unsure of what drove him to do it, Naruto spun on his feet coming to dead stop and narrowly dodged a thin knife by turning his head an inch to the side. Shifting his eyes to glare at the horrified expression of Clove as it became her turn to spin around and flee from the much larger boy. With no sign of her partner and currently having the advantage Naruto gave chase after her. He was intent on playing to his advantage here. Adrenaline coursed through him as he suddenly felt like a hunter once again, trailing the girl. Believing her had cornered her behind some large fallen trees forming natural cover. Reaching back to draw out his knife once again, he only caught the sound of her jumping at him from behind at the last second. She twisted her body around his own acrobatically too tightly for him to swing a proper punch at her and keeping his hands off the pouch holstering his weapons. Trying to wrap a short thin rope. One he idly recognized had been cut from one of the packs at the cornucopia, around his throat, Naruto managed to get his hand in between the rope and his neck and keep his windpipe unrestricted. Using his free hand Naruto twisted around to grab the waist of the girl's pants and tear her off his shoulders while slamming her into the ground. Knowing she had lost the small fight she rolled and flicked one of her blades at him only for the Naruto to lift his arm in front of his face to prevent the bullseye of her dagger embedding just above his cheekbone. It still was agonizing to suddenly have a knife hilt deep in his forearm, but suddenly filled with red-hot anger, Naruto shrugged off the pain and yanked the knife free with a snarl. 
Clove had already bolted by the time he pulled the blade free and was halfway down the ravine he had been chasing her in earlier. He was skilled with throwing blades too though, and with a flick of his arm he gave her knife back to her catching her in the back just to the right of her spine in her shoulder blade. The girl screamed and crumpled to the ground from the wound and Naruto closed in to finish her. Only for Kato to come to her rescue sprinting out to meet Naruto swinging his sword for Naruto's head hoping to make it a fast and easy fight. Naruto wasn't inclined to allow that though. Leaning back to dodge the strike he kicked out his foot catching Kato in the chest and slamming him back into the ravine. Both boys were knocked off balance and scrambled to their feet. Before circling one another. Exchanging a few blows with one another, Kato tried again to decapitate his opponent only for the blade to be stopped short as Naruto's reach was long enough to catch the his wrist. Exchanging punches to the body with their free hands, Naruto suddenly snagged hold of Kato's elbow and twisted, intending to break his sword arm. Instead, the athletic boy from District 2 spun with the twist, actually flipping and landing back on his feet facing the opposite direction. Despite that, Naruto pried the sword from Kato's hand and suddenly the terms of the fight had shifted. Unlike Kato, Naruto wasn't used to such a long blade and his strikes were more clumsy. Despite that he managed to force Kato back before hurling the sword like a javelin and embedding it into a tree when the boy dodged. Kato wasted no time charging Naruto again fully intent on beating him into submission but Naruto was even more in his element now, sliding one of his knives from his holster and spinning it up into an ice pick grip and meeting Kato halfway. The parry exchanged blows once again, every punch from Naruto being met with one from Kato, save when he swiped or stabbed out with his knife as the elder boy evaded the cuts from the blade. As they fought on though it became clear Naruto was the better fighter. His speed and strength of his attacks making it hard for Kato to block them and even harder for him to endure the bone-shaking blows the other boy dealt. With the addition of his terrifying skill with the knife, flicking it mid-air through the fight into his other hand and into different grips to make the attacks especially unpredictable. After losing ground continuously, Kato was able to again take the advantage in the fight by slamming his knee up into Naruto's chest and pivoting quickly to place a kick right into his wrist sending his knife clattering against nearby rocks. Naruto stumbled back and his enemy capitalized on the moment to slam another kick into his stomach and send him skidding backward into the wall of the ravine. He gave Naruto no chance to catch his breath as he followed up with a violent kick to the chest that left Naruto wheezing in pain as he briefly saw stars and what breath he had was forcefully expelled from his body. He wasn't down yet though and bringing his arm up to stop Kato's follow-up punch to his face Naruto snagged hold of his fellow blonde only for the older boy to flip him over his shoulder and slam him into the ground painfully. Ignoring the bruising he felt all along his back Naruto twisted to his feet and wrapped his hand around the older boy's throat, choking him. Kato growled at his opponent as he slammed a few body shots into him that went ignored. Changing tactics he jabbed his fingers into the stab wound caused by Clove's knife in Naruto's forearm and tore at the bloody hole with his bare hand causing Naruto howled in agony and slam his other arm into Kato and sending him sprawling once again. Fully intending to end this fight now before he grew more injured, Naruto brought his foot down where Kato's head was, hoping to crush the older kid's head in a stomp. Instead Kato rolled to his feet and the two were back to exchanging body shots and punches. Again Naruto yanked one of his knives free from the holster on his pack and added it to the fray causing Kato to try and put some distance between them. Just as Naruto had wanted. Just as he hopped out of reach of the knife, Naruto's foot planted itself into the center of his chest slamming him backward into the stone walls of the ravine. Cornering him with a knife-wielding Naruto looming over him ready to end this once again. Using both hands Naruto plunged his knife down towards Kato's head, only stopping when Kato's own hands wrapped around Naruto's and struggled to hold him at bay. Unable to fully stop the stabbing motion Kato was able to shift the weight of the attack to the side of his head striking the blade against the rock wall. Pressing on Naruto pushed his blade toward Kato's head once again making both boys struggle down the length of the rock wall sending sparks flying as the blade carved a line down its face chipping both blade and rock alike. By now both boys were exhausted, 
panting and grunting in exertion but neither were willing to give in and allow the other take their life without a fight to the very end. Reaching the edge of the rock wall Kato pivoted under Naruto's weight and managed to knock him off balance long enough to slip past him and grab at the hilt of his sword still stuck in the nearby tree. With a grunt of exertion once again, the boy freed his blade and turned to face Naruto, fully armed once again. Now they began to fight both wielding their favored weapons. Naruto's quick and agile knife spinning and slicing through the air as he would parry and evade Kato's larger heavier slashes with the sword. The blows sped up once again, sparks occasionally spraying into the air as their blades met and blood from bloodied lips and noses running freely along with that of the gaping hole in Naruto's arm. Neither could keep this up for much longer and knowing that Kato's fellow careers could be coming to his aid at any time Naruto realized he had to cut his losses and make a break for it. Making a final feigned kick toward Kato, Naruto managed to narrowly avoid the sword being plunged into his bicep, instead scoring a large cut on Kato's leg. Rather than continuing and possibly killing the boy though, Naruto had to lean backward to avoid a throwing knife sent spinning by his face. Clove was back on her feet finally having pulled the blade from her back and launched it at Naruto. Already she was reaching for more and Naruto, following his earlier instinct, turned and ran. Snatching up both his dropped knives from earlier and disappearing into the trees leaving Kato and Clove gasping and bloodied in heaps at the bottom of the ravine unable to follow at the same speed. It took some time, but eventually Kato and Clove rejoined their fellow careers. They were less than pleased to find Katniss had managed to scurry up arguably the largest tree any of them had seen and taken refuge in the uppermost branches. Up there she was sheltered from the careers below by layers of the intertwined branches of other trees. A practical tree fort. Glimmer had attempted to shoot her with an arrow but thanks to the wound Naruto had landed on her in passing she had lost any trace of accuracy she once had. What's more Kato and Clove were too injured to do much either and Marvel simply couldn't climb well enough to make it more than a couple of feet off the ground. Deciding to settle in for a pseudo-siege, the four bedded down for the night and set up a camp. They had far more supplies than Katniss did and intended to simply wait her out. Haymitch watched with a frown as both kids under his mentorship suffered from their painful injuries. However, unlike Naruto, who had currently returned to his cave to nurse his wound as best he could. Katniss had practically nothing in the way of supplies to treat herself and was trapped in the treetops with the metaphorical wolves circling below. He felt useless as he watched her use a little of her water to try and clean her leg up. The teen seized up briefly from the sudden sharp pain of it. The mentor couldn't watch any more pushing to his feet and moving through the sponsors gathered in the large courtyard watching the games in a viewing party that had been going since before the games even officially started. He did his level best, playing up Katniss's perceived personality to the capital citizens and pushing the angle of her being an underdog against the big dangerous careers. Even willing to shove the romantic story that had spun up around both his tributes in their faces who didn't want to give a hand to the two lovers after Naruto had risked life and limb and even been hurt trying to give Katniss a fighting chance. In the end, it hadn't been all that hard. Naruto and Katniss had done most of the work for him. They were the sweethearts of the capital this year. Not truly underdogs but far from being careers they also took the spotlight of being the most dangerous competitors. Filling both the role as the favorites to win and struggling against stacked odds with a larger career pack, they were a sure win for getting sponsor support. That was how Haymitch managed to get the little parachuting container to drift down into the upper canopy of the tree Katniss was sheltering in. Just what she needed to turn the tables if she played smart and careful. Katniss felt like she could almost laugh with joy, a manic smile on her face as she read the little note card that came with the sponsor gift. A simple line of words telling her to apply the ointment she had been given generously and stay alive, signed by Haymitch. She took back all the terrible things she had thought or said about Haymitch in the past. He came through for her now when it counted and that was what mattered. Doing as the card had said, Katniss spread the salve thickly over her wound and the change was almost instant. A cooling sensation followed by a numbness. It was soothing and for the first time in hours Katniss could breathe easily. 
Within a couple of hours, the careers had fallen asleep, overconfidence leading to them to not even put up a watch rotation. Katniss for her part was too exhausted to capitalize on that at the moment. Instead she was forced to get some rest as well. After all, in the morning she would have to find a way to either defeat all four careers or escape from them. No easy task even as injured as they were. Hunger Games Hosting Booth Capital Caesar and Claudius, like the day before kept up their hosting of the games into the second day. The two talking heads making predictions and analyzing everything that happened with the remaining tributes down to the choice to walk in one direction over the other. Like the day before, and honestly the event overall, Naruto and Katniss remained the focal point for much of their conversation. Every action poured over and debated on. From the moment they woke up on, I see Katniss is continuing on away from the center of the arena and the other tributes as best as she can. Claudius pointed out in the early morning hours. Yes, that could be a smart strategy, however she needs to be careful because venturing too far from the others could lead to involvement of the game makers to keep her from the edge of the arena. We all know it's never good when a game maker has to become involved in guiding a tribute back in. It's usually very brutal to remind them of why they are here. Caesar said with a slight frown, Indeed. Claudius nodded along with Caesar's words. Almost an exact contrast to Katniss, our other District 12 tribute is instead remaining relatively close to the center. His little fortress he's made out of that cave seems to have been perfect for him. Caesar said as screens changed to show Naruto starting the day. There is some risk there as well I think. I couldn't agree more. Between someone stumbling onto his hideout, having to leave for supplies right in the hunting grounds of the District 1 and 2 alliance, and not having anyone to guard his back in what amounts to hostile territory, Naruto really is playing a dangerous game. Caesar agreed. As the two continued to talk on the change with Naruto finding another tribute's path caught their eye and they changed the majority of screens to catch him from multiple angles. Interesting, it looks to me like he is weighing the possibilities of following after another competitor or passing by back to his hideaway. Caesar contemplated out loud. We know that the District 8 female, Angelica is the one to have passed by there, things already were not looking good for her. Her injuries from yesterday might not be what does her in though. Claudius added. Oh and there he goes. He's tracking her down now. The men watched on along with the audience as Naruto followed the path of blood and disturbed nature leading to the wounded girl. And he's found her. Caesar said with a serious tone. The hosts remained silent as the teens spoke to one another and bowed their heads almost in reverence for the loss of the girl's life. Look at that, once again he's being as respectful as he can for a fallen opponent. This kid really is a softy down under that hard shell. Caesar pointed out, making the capital viewers and even many in the outlying districts grow in adoration for the boy. The day continued on, the spectacle of the fire chasing Katniss and her narrow escape despite injury taking their full attention. They were so focused on Katniss fleeing from the career pack after finding the pool of water that they didn't even notice Naruto drawing near until he burst from the greenery and slashed at the arm of Marvel. Look at that. He's no knight in shining armor but when Katniss needs him Naruto seems up to the task. Now it appears he's leading a pair of her pursuers away. No doubt this will end in bloodshed of some type. Caesar said. I agree, Caesar. Naruto is surely hoping at a chance to pick some of his main competition in the way of the District 2 tributes off while the same could be said for his opponents too. Right now they have him appearing to be on the run and outnumbered. Templesmith explained. Now they're fighting. She may have the drop on him but it seems to me that. Yes he's broken free like I expected but that knife wound to the arm could spell trouble later on even if he can shrug it off for now. Caesar continued. Yes, and it looks like Clove is the one in danger now Caesar. Claudius began as Clove fled from Naruto. Both men winced in sympathy as the knife embedded itself in her shoulder blade from Naruto's throw. In danger indeed. 
Naruto is closing in for the kill, but look there. It seems Kato is having none of that. Caesar said. Such skill. Claudius crowed at the sight of Naruto and Kato's battle. This is what it is to have two top of the running tributes go head to head. Arguably the most dangerous boys or even just tributes in the games this year and they are unstoppable when going all out. Caesar called. It's like an immovable object and unstoppable force coloring in real time Caesar. That it is. Now which is more apt to live up to such a name unstoppable force? That's the question we're wondering about here. They continued to watch the fight even as Naruto howled in pain from Kato attacking his earlier injury and Naruto injured the older boy. It looks like Naruto has had enough for now. He's headed back to his hideout leaving an injured and exhausted pair of tributes in his wake. No doubt we will be seeing a rematch in the future though. Caesar narrated. It seems Katniss has gotten out of their reach as well. At least for the time being. Claudius mentioned. That it does and it looks like Kato's pack is planning to wait her out. They're setting up camp. Caesar said then tilt his head as the anthem played and the face of Angelica displayed on screen. Our only casualty for the day, Angelica from District 8. Don't miss out tomorrow folks, I think we can safely say a resolution to the siege of Katniss Tree will be coming to an end one way or another. Till then I've been your host Caesar Flickerman along with my good friend Claudius Templesmith. Caesar ended the hosting for the day planning on heading home to grab some shut eye. He had an early day the next day doing the same all over again. Katniss awoke while the artificial sun of the arena was still down. The only light provided came from the false moon and stars and what few embers remained from the career pax fire. Taking stock of her situation she realized that her leg was no longer in agony. Not even the dulled pain from after she had placed the salve on the wound. After pulling back her makeshift bandage she gingerly prodded at the menacing scar that decorated her thigh. It was amazing how well the medicine sent by Haymitch had helped. She felt no pain and the swelling was long gone, returning the painless function of her leg. That was her first of many problems thankfully handled. After untying the ropes that kept her from slipping out of the tree while she slept, the District 12 tribute carefully descended to some lower branches in the tree to peek down on her competitors below. The four careers were in somewhat rough shape, though nowhere as rough as Katniss would have liked. The worse off seemed to be Glimmer and Clove, the two girls. Glimmer's injury from Naruto had been a very large cut on her arm that kept her from properly using the bow she had. Either the others hadn't attempted to use it themselves or she had refused to surrender the weapon despite it being nearly useless for herself now. That was good. She didn't need one of them trying to shoot her out of the tree, the canopy only provided so much resistance to projectiles. Clove was worse for wear as well. She now looked to be wearing a cropped shirt made of bandages. Whatever Naruto had done to her had also made her slow and stiff in movement. No doubt sponsors would provide her some sort of remedy soon enough though. Of the two boys, Marvel from District 1 was in perfect condition. No injuries at all. He was the one she was most concerned about at the moment, if he found it within him, she worried the larger stronger boy would climb the tree and being armed when she really wasn't she had no illusions on how that fight would most likely go. Thankfully, the careers seemed far too confident in their numbers. They either hadn't placed a sentry over the night or that sentry had fallen asleep right alongside the rest of the pack. It didn't change the fact that Katniss had no way out of her tree fort without waking them up, and the fact that they still outnumbered her four to one made any dreams of slipping away pipe dreams. Katniss bit her lip in frustrated thought as she climbed back up into the safer upper branches of her massive tree. Settling back in she ran a quick inventory on her supplies while trying her best to remain calm. She knew she was alone in this. She knew Naruto had led two of her attackers away and thankfully overheard that he had escaped, though not without injury if what they said could be believed. She couldn't expect any help at this point. She'd gotten help from both Naruto and Hamich and in the end she was still trapped in a tree. 
she didn't want her fellow District 12 tribute to have gotten himself hurt for nothing. She had to find a way to make her escape. As he mind whirled in though a soft sound caught her attention. A whispered call of twelve. Katniss turned her head to see in a thinner, yet taller tree the young girl from District 11 had perched herself among the tallest branches, sending her a bright smile. Katniss couldn't help but smile back despite her situation. Seeing the girl felt like a relief somehow. Especially seeing as she was completely uninjured and healthy looking. Rue, if she recalled her name correctly, sent a slight wave which Katniss returned before pointing upward above Katniss' head. The older tribute looked up and couldn't help blinking in confusion for a little bit. All she saw was more branches of the massive tree. She turned back to look at Rue once more but the small girl pointed more vigorously up into the higher branches. Katniss turned to look again this time more carefully focusing. She heard it before she saw it. A slight buzzing. A hum of activity from insects. She had to adjust her position on the branches to get a look at what Rue was pointing out. When she finally saw it she was confused once again. It seemed like the girl was warning her about the hive of tracker jackers further up in the tree. She could appreciate that. A single tracker jacker was no real big deal. If you were allergic it would be a death sentence, but even the venom from a single one of their stings was enough to cause mild hallucinations. A hive could kill anyone. No matter their resistance to the venom. Glancing back to Rue the girl from District 11 was now motioning something else with her fingers. A scissor motion, like she was saying to cut the hive down. Katniss at first thought the girl was insane but then realized the idea she was trying to pass on. Cut the nest down and drop it on the career sleeping below. A brilliant idea. Thank you. Katniss whispered as loudly as she dared. Rue simply smiled back and waved as she slipped backward into the shadows of the tree. It didn't take long for Katniss to lose sight of her in the darkness. The girl sighed faintly before her face shifted to a determined look and she began securing all her supplies properly. Once she dropped the hive, she would need to move fast and avoid the tracker jackers herself as well as the careers. Okay, alright, here goes nothing. Katniss mumbled to herself as she climbed further up the limbs of the tree. As she neared the hive the humming from the nest grew louder and louder, not just from being closer to it. As she approached the swarm began to grow anxious, a few even venturing out to buzz around her. One even stung her on the neck as she settled the serrated edge of her knife against the base of the hive. Swatting the bug, she ignored the sting of pain shooting through her neck to saw at the hive. Her actions stirred the tracker jackers up into even more of a frenzy as they realized some sort of predator was coming for their home. A small handful more landed on her and began stinging her her causing Katniss to grunt and whimper in pain. Finally though the nest broke free and plummeted down toward the sleeping careers below. The moment it smacked into the ground and burst open the cloud of enraged tracker jackers raced to the first movement near them. Unfortunately for Glimmer she had been right beside the impact site of the hive and was nearly covered in a coat of the creatures as she began to scream in pain flaily uselessly to try and remove them. The others weren't spared from the swarm either, however they scattered before they could be truly be swarmed as their comrade was. The group fled, leaving behind Glimmer as she stumbled and fell, quickly swelling from the sheer amount of toxin in her body. The blonde girl choked out sobs as she struggled to even breathe. Most of the SWRM had left her by now, handled as she was, and pursued the fleeing careers. As Katniss made her way out of the tree she carefully collected all she could from the group. Most notably, she finally had the bow and arrows that she had wanted. It felt good to have her weapon of choice in her hands, like she was safer and stronger than before just by possessing it. With her new items, she quickly made her way out of the small camp. Stopping only briefly to glance at the dying girl from District 1. By now Glimmer was unrecognizable. The girl had swollen up so much she hardly looked human. Still the panicked gurgling and snorting as she struggled to breathe could be heard and Katniss felt she owed the girl at least the mercy of a quick death. It was human decency, 
at the least. She quickly crouched down and drew out her knife. She hovered it over the girl's throat. Her eyes were swollen shut and Katniss wondered if Glimmer even knew someone else was there. Was she even conscious? She seriously hoped not. For a moment she thought maybe she should say something. Anything. But she couldn't think of anything to say at all. She wasn't about to lie. She wasn't sorry. It was her or Glimmer, and she didn't care that much for Glimmer. It felt wrong to just end her though. Somehow. In the end she clenched her own eyes tight and imagined she was finishing a deer, back home. For a brief moment, she was just back in District 12, just over the fence, finishing off an excellent hunt. That moment lasted as long as it took for her to withdraw her knife once again. She cleaned the blood off and tried to keep herself from looking back at the corpse as she left. It wasn't hard. Her mind was already struggling with her next challenge. The toxins from the few stings she had received were beginning to cause her vision to swim and the world to spin around her. She stumbled and tripped through the woods struggling to remain upright as she went. This was not good. It was far worse than she had expected. Eventually it was too much and she clung to a tree and slid down against it. Around her the world blurred into a mix of colors and shapes. It was all she could do to not lean over and puke. The worry with that being that she might never be able to stop again if she started heaving now. Despite everything though she could hear the rushed snapping and cracking of trees as someone or something approached and, refusing to go down without some semblance of a fight, Katniss fumbled to draw an arrow back on her bow from a sitting position. As the object approaching broke the line of foliage she released the arrow almost at the same moment. Naruto had spent the night cleaning and doing his best to stitch up the wound on his arm. Had it just been the knife injury from Clove he probably would be able to largely ignore the pain and stitch it up neatly. Kato attacking it had torn the flesh into an even large misshapen injury. Once his adrenaline had worn off, he had been hardly able to touch it let alone try and stitch it up. It took far too long to handle the injury. But in the end he had a very basic set of stitches closing it as best as possible. He had bandaged it as well and prayed more than anything that it didn't get infected or something. He was rather attached to his arm after all. Okay so I am definitely not handling this well if I'm making trash jokes in my head. He groaned out loud, spitting the thin stick he had been biting down on during his little surgery operation. With that he had fallen into a fitful sleep. Between the pain, the paranoia caused by the thought of another tracking him back to his hideout, and whether he wanted to admit it or not, the worry for his fellow District 12 tribute, he wouldn't ever get the rest he really wanted. That became especially apparent when he snapped up at the sudden screams and shouts of fear and pain that echoed throughout the forest. He was at the edge of his hideout in a moment's notice and listening to get an idea of what was going on. It didn't take long to realize it was the careers and coming from the direct he had last seen them chasing Katniss in. Once more, against his own better judgment he set out with some supplies and his knives to find the other half of his district's sacrifices. He didn't engage the fleeing careers as they fled past, though it was tempting seeing as Clove obviously seemed to be struggling. He did notice that they seemed to be down a member and wondered if Katniss had been the one to eliminate another portion of the competition. As he continued on a cannon boomed and for a moment he feared the worst, feeling fear and sadness at the loss of someone he had to at least consider a friend. He pushed on though, hoping that she wasn't the lost tribute and instead it was the missing career tribute, Glimmer. Coming to the career pack's former campsite he had never felt so relieved to see another person's corpse. He had never expected to ever feel relieved to see a corpse, but the fact that it was not Katniss laying on the ground was enough to fill him with a renewed vigor. He was no tracker but anyone could have followed the path that Katniss had cut through the woods. There was something obviously wrong with her and if Naruto had to guess it had something to do with the broken tracker jacker nest and puffy looking district one tribute. He continued looking, her path grew easier and easier to follow as she seemed to lose more and more of her faculties. He grimaced as the sound of the careers picked up behind him. They seemed to have regrouped and returned to their camp. 
The outrage at one of their own being killed was easy to hear in their voices as they shouted and called back and forth to one another. It wouldn't be long before they were on Katniss and thereby his trail. What the hell is wrong with me? He growled out as he found his feet moving on their own. He knew where he was going. He had to get her moving and lead the careers away. Naruto didn't understand why, or rather he refused to understand why he was willing to do all this for her. She was supposed to be just another opponent. Another obstacle to him living and getting near immunity to actually speak his mind against the capital. He couldn't help himself though and he had to admit, a part of him wanted to make sure she survived this whole ordeal. The rest of him struggled to remind that portion that her surviving meant him dying. Shaking the thoughts from his mind he carried on toward Katniss's position. The shouts of the careers had died down by now. They were on the hunt and it wouldn't take too long for them to find him then Katniss. He had to pick up the pace. Deciding for speed over stealth he quickened his step, all but crashing through the brush into a small clearing. He very nearly died as an arrow narrowly passed his head and pinned a leaf to the trunk of a tree beside him. Whoa, Katniss, it's me. It's just me. He said holding his hands up. Naruto? The girl mumbled squinting her eyes in his direction. He quickly took in her appearance. She did not look good. Pale and sweaty, unfocused eyes and a slight sway to her movements, she looked on the verge of passing out or puking. Either that or both. On top of that her clothes were ripped and bloody with plenty of small singed places here and there. What are you doing here? She struggled to ask. Shit. Same as yesterday I guess. Come on you have to get up. You have to move Katniss. Naruto said as he came over and lifted her easily to her feet even as she swayed and nearly went right back down again. Come on, stay up. You gotta stay up alright? Naruto encouraged but she was out of it. The girl went limp in his arms and a spike of panic shot through his chest. He took a calming breath when he noticed she had simply passed out and began trying to formulate a plan. He couldn't bring her with him. Trying to drag her back with him to the cave would make them easy pickings for the remaining careers. He couldn't take all three of them while injured and protecting Katniss. It was impossible. This will have to do. He said as he lugged the motionless body of his, friend to a narrow crevasse between the exposed roots of two larger trees. It wouldn't be comfortable but it would do. He slid her into the hole before pulling a log over the hole. It covered most of the opening and a handful of fallen limbs covered the rest. By the time he was finished he could hear the approaching careers and slipped into a hiding place of his own. One nowhere near as well hidden as he would like. Hey, there an arrow. The higher pitched voice of Clove called out. Katniss is around here then. She must be hallucinating, shooting at nothing. Kato said as he pulled the arrow free and scanned the area with his eyes. They widened as they locked with Naruto's. Before he could shout a warning Naruto burst from his spot and drove an attack toward Marvel. Sadly the boy had been too alert to be injured as his comrade from District 1 had been the day beforehand he brought his spear up easily to drive Naruto back. The tribute from Twelve spun around the spear and wasted no time charging off into the woods once again. This fucking coward. Marvel bellowed after him. It's hit and run tactics. Try and go around and cut him off. Clove and I will push him toward you if we can. Kato commanded before taking off with Clove following close behind. Marvel cursed before sprinting out of the clearing as well to try and cut the boy off just as Kato had suggested. Naruto eventually lost his pursuers. It had taken most of the day but they had eventually given up and returned to their own base at the cornucopia. That still left him far from his normal base of operations. He was no longer even in the forest. Instead he was now in a section of tall grasses taller than he was. He had even managed to get somewhat lost inside and began fumbling for a way back out. That of course was what led to him running into Thresh. The District 11 male. 
He was the largest and most physically imposing of the tributes and Naruto was already on edge when they both stepped into the same break in the grasses. Neither moved. Both tightly clutched their weapons in hand and eyed one another up. The large kopesh blade in the hands of the District 1 male made Naruto nervous. As it was, he was clearly at the disadvantage here. Normally he would lash out hoping to offset his opponent but he could tell Thresh was ready for something like that. He was tensed and ready to fight. So, uncharacteristically of him, he took the second option. He slowly opened his hands and slid the knife back into its holster across his chest. He kept his hands up and made sure he presented himself as no threat to the other boy. 12. Thresh said simply while he continued to keep his guard up. 11. Naruto replied. Career pack? The boy asked, jerking his chin toward the clearly damaged arm. Yeah. Naruto answered back. Same every year. Thresh commented. Doesn't have to be. Naruto suggested. Yeah? Thresh asked. Could flip the tables on them. 12 and 11 versus 1 and 2. Naruto said. Thresh regarded him calculatingly. Despite his large size and obvious strength, he was by no means the stereotypical big strong idiot. Thresh was a dangerous man. I kinda like that. Thresh replied. Yeah? Naruto asked. Heh, yeah. Thresh said as he slipped his weapon back onto the strap at his waist. He then offered out his hand to shake. Naruto gingerly reached forward and shook hands. Slowly the handshake turned more rapid and both boys grinned at one another. It would be refreshing to stick it to the inner districts for once. You, uh, know the way out of here? Naruto asked. Thresh snorted. Before turning and waving for Naruto to follow after him. Thresh had brought Naruto back to his campsite and the parry had shared a meal while discussing their plan. Eventually one of them, though as the conversation continued they couldn't recall which of them, had suggested that they make a true alliance between districts 12 and 11 and even try to bring in some of the other outer districts like 9 and 10. Both district 9 tributes are already gone. Naruto said. Oh, yeah. I kinda have just ignored the others on the list at night just hoping that Rue doesn't show up on there. Thresh replied. I do the same. I dunno why, but I always worry for Katniss showing up on there. Naruto said. Well, you two are dash, Thresh began. No, no we aren't. Naruto interjected. I think the rest of the country disagrees. They are all pretty sure that you are. Thresh chuckled getting Naruto to seethe silently. Don't get worked up over it. If anything the only shitty part is you are both here. Only one gets to go home. Thresh said sadly. Yeah. Naruto was somber as well. The pair were silent for a bit, neither really wanting to keep talking about the subject. After all, they too would have to eventually fight one another to get to go home. What about Ten? I know the girl was killed but the boy? Thresh asked. We could offer it, but I don't know where the hell he's at. Naruto pointed out. I do. He's been holed up in a small group of trees past the grasses. Wait, you just been keeping track of the other tributes then? Naruto asked. Not all of them. Just those nearby. Mostly been hoping to see Rue so she and I can stay together. Haven't seen a hint of her at all since the bloodbath though. Thresh said as he finished up his food. Fair enough. So ready to head out? Naruto asked as he polished off the last of his own food and stood. Might as well, better to find him before nightfall. It's be dusk in a couple hours so if we keep a steady pace we can be there and back just before it's dark. Thresh explained. Sounds good. With that both boys started off. Naruto following behind the older and larger boy. It didn't take long before they settled into a companionable silence and Naruto could almost imagine they were just two friends out for a hike. 
It only served to spur a cycle of thoughts that wound back to him mentally cursing the capital for their cruelty. After all, he could make friends with Thresh, and perhaps any other tribute here in the games. In the end they would be trying to kill one another no matter their relationship. The hike wasn't long. The ground they covered was flat and easy enough to traverse. That and the careers were busy licking their wounds and formulating their own plots and schemes for once. It allowed Naruto and Thresh an easy time making their way to their fellow Outer District tribute. The District 10 male was easy enough to pick out among the small group of trees he had taken up as his own home. He had a bright yellow bag where most of his supplies were kept, one that stuck out like a sore thumb in the natural world. It was a bit of a shock that only Thresh had found him up to this point in Naruto's opinion. 10. Thresh called, causing the boy to whirl around in shock and scrambled for the large hooked knife he had for a weapon. Relax, we are here to talk, not to fight. Naruto said while raising his hands up in a non-threatening way. What's there to talk about? Just fuck off. The boy hollered, not lowering his guard in the slightest. At least hear us out first. If you don't agree then we can all, go our separate ways and no harm no foul right? Thresh pointed out. The boy was silent for a while before slowly nodding. Naruto let out a small sigh in relief. Strength really did exist in numbers and he really liked the idea of the outer districts starting to finally band together against the people punching down on them all the time. We need to turn the tables on the careers. They have been training for the games their whole life and like always they formed an alliance before the games even started. Interested in having an alliance of our own? Naruto asked. The tribute stared back at Naruto and slowly lowered his weapon and let out a calming breath of his own. Slipping the knife into a makeshift holster on his thigh the boy nodded slowly and thoughtfully. You got an 11 for your ranking right, 12? He asked. Yeah. I can't say I remember what you got though. Naruto replied, not mentioning the fact he also didn't know the boy's name. At least Thresh seemed to be in the same boat. Enough of the district numbers. I'm Thresh, this is Naruto, I do know your name. Thresh said. It's Colt. So what exactly do you have planned anyway? He asked the other two boys. Well, I guess first we should find the rest of our group. Katniss should be back in the woods, as for Ru I have no idea. Naruto answered. We'll find her. Thresh responded. That's all well and good but my other half is already dead. Nobody to look for there. Colt said with a sour look on his face. Naruto had to wonder if every pair of tributes didn't have some sort of connection to one another. He could tell the boy was broken up about his fellow District 10 tributes passing and he wondered what he would feel when Katniss died. Angry? Sad? Maybe just relieved that he didn't have to kill her. Thresh caught the agitated expression growing on Naruto's face out of the corner of his eye. With Colt already seeming to be a sour person in general he felt it was best to get them underway and working on something rather than letting them wallow in the thought of what would come or had come. First thing is first. You know roughly where Katniss is so we'll go collect her. My old camp is about halfway to the edge of the forest and we can make it back there before it gets too dark. We'll camp there for the night and take turns sleeping in shifts in case the careers start hunting again. Thresh explained getting nods from the other boys. Sounds like the best plan we can have at the moment. Cold agreed, and the three of them got underway with Colt in the middle of the group. Just as Thresh had expected they reached his campsite around dusk and began settling in for the night. They drew straws with the first watch going to Thresh, second to Colt and last to Naruto. Supper was a set of leftovers from earlier prey caught since the first day. Naruto and Thresh actually had enough to share and Colt ate better than he had since he finished off the last of his ration packs on the morning of the second day. Colt and Naruto were quick to bed down after they finished eating. That didn't mean it was easy to sleep. Trust was not something that was really a virtue in the Hunger Games. The need for rest overtook their distrust slowly though and both boys eventually fell asleep.
When Naruto next awoke it was to the sound of a shout and he was on his feet in a flash with his hand on a knife as he prepared to defend the campsite only for his eyes to narrow as it was clear Colt had been aiming to kill Naruto in his sleep, only for Thresh to catch him in the act. You son of a bitch. The District 10 tribute spat at Thresh as he rushed Naruto. The fight was brief and easy. It was two on one and Naruto and Thresh were both ranked higher on the danger index than Colt for a reason. Naruto easily caught the boy's hands and, unable to break free and turn to face Thresh, Colt could only scream as Thresh reached around from behind him and slit his throat. As the body dropped, convulsing a few time before Colt died Naruto and Thresh exchanged a look. Naruto was grateful to the older boy. Truly. He wondered if he would have done the same briefly but shook off the thought as he offered his hand out to the larger boy. Thanks. Naruto said as they shook, both focused more on the corpse now laying at the center of the campsite. Yeah, just don't stab me in the back like he planned and we're even. Thresh huffed out. No problem. As a cannon sounded, both boys worked to drag Colt's body out of the camp and dumped it into a heap nearby. They had gradually become more numb to death and blood since the start of this ordeal, and hardly flinched as they did so. Despite that, sleep evaded both of them for the rest of the night and by the time they were truly calmed down the sun was already beginning to climb into the sky. It's gonna suck being tired all day. Naruto complained lightly, true but we need to find the girls. Thresh replied. I can agree to that. Let's break camp and start out. The sooner we link up with them the better. Then we can plan what we'll do about the careers. Naruto said. Thresh simply nodded as both boys got to work breaking down the camp. It wouldn't take long and both would soon be on their move once more. Hunger Games Hosting Booth Capital Another excellent day for the games. Wouldn't you say so, Claudius? Caesar's voice boomed. Truly it was, so many twists and turns. Templesmith replied, Indeed. From little Rue of District 11 lending Miss Everdeen a hand and that excellently handled plan with the the tracker jacker nest landing the fan favorite Katniss her first kill, to the drama of our new outer district alliance beginning and the betrayal of Colt from District 10. Caesar seemed positively ecstatic with the developments throughout the day. It was a very smart strategy, or would have been if Thresh hadn't woken up just in time. Colt could have really upset these games in a single stroke. Claudius commented. Right you are. Caesar returned. With that said I want to return our attention to what is quickly becoming one of my favorite aspects of these games. The interaction between Naruto and Katniss. Oh yes. Claudius practically giggled. Once again, throwing away his own safety for her. Naruto is nothing like his initial appearance suggests. Miss Everdeen is likely alive thanks to him. No doubt that the remaining tributes of District 1 and 2 would have surely found her if not for him. Flickerman commented. True, and even though she finally has her bow and could really cause some serious trouble for her opponents now, that tracker jacker toxin is some rough stuff. Claudius added. For sure. I mean we all saw what they did to poor Glimmer, but even just a small dose of that toxin is enough to cause extremely vivid hallucinations, alter a victim's sense of balance, and just make things terrible for them. No doubt poor Katniss will be feeling those effects for a full day if not longer. Caesar said. Oh no doubt about it Caesar. I'm simply amazed she handled it as well as she did. Just goes to show you how tough Miss Katniss really is. A regular Amazonian woman. Caesar said as he and Claudius devolved into obnoxious false laughter. Well, it appears that is the conclusion of day three with a total of two deaths today. Tune in again for more coverage on your annual Hunger Games, and remember viewership is mandatory, enjoyment is inevitable. Same time tomorrow folks. Caesar said signing off for the night.